hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video we are going to see a new data analyst portfolio project and the name of the project is bank loan report and the domain which we have chosen in this uh, project is a financial domain or we can say a bank domain and this is the most used domain in real-time industries also most of the data analyst uh, developer works on this particular projects only and these projects are very much important because these are i can say very much uh, critical or i can say they are tricky and they are a bit advanced so in this project we are going to see each and every step how to build this particular dashboard and we will see or you will be able to you know learn everything from basic to advanced and after completing this project you will be in the position that you have learned so many functionalities and you will be able to answer so many or we can say variety of interview questions as well as you will be in the position to work in real time industry also so in front of you you can see this will be our final product so this is the first dashboard so we have seen total three dashboard or we will be seeing total three dashboard in this complete project and we will see everything step by step in every tool and in all the data analyst portfolio tools also okay so first you can see this is a bank loan report which is we can say a summary of the report and this or this we can see this particular dashboard is more towards kpi dashboard we can see most of or we can say we are uh, you know showing different measures with respect to whatever we have in our data and we are giving an overall idea of to our business or to our bank client whichever we are building this project to and you can see this we have operated by using some filters over here and there are different kpis we can say these are the header kpis or we can say the main kpis and then we have distributed our loan with good loan and the bank loan we will see everything and with respect to that we have shown some kpis then there are some indicators also over here which are totally dynamic again and then we have shown a small grade view with respect to what are the loan status currently and how are the numbers working with respect to that okay so if you see for different purpose so if i see for bad loan and good loan also you can see and if you see for grade so for different grade grade if you want to see for grade a if you want to see for grade b if you want to see for grade c with respect to that we can see the values are changing and we can you know slice and dice the data with respect to these filters if you want to see for different states also if you want to see for alaska we can see for alaska if you want to see for california how the figures are how the customer behavior are there and how the bank is performing or how the loans are distributed in that particular state we can see with respect to that so not only these filters you can add a number of filters over here so for me i have added only these particular filters and with respect to that we will be also uh, you can see there are some navigation buttons over here so right now we are on a summary dashboard so when i click on this overview button so it will take me to our second uh, dashboard that is a bank loan report overview in which we will deep dive in the data we will see how the data is looking at granular level or at we can say at the deeper level and we will generate some insights from there so with respect to that the header kpis will remain constant and we have analyzed different charts with respect to our problem statement which i will be discussing in some time so we can see we have a line chart or area chart with respect to which we have total loan application then by state then by we have by term by employee length by purpose and by home ownership so here you can see uh, we have an option to change the major of this entire report okay so we can see we are firstly seeing by total application so let's say we want to see the total by total amount received okay so here you can see we have changed the major completely here and we can see the report now by a different major that is total amount received and you can see the titles of this particular chart are also dynamic so when i see i want to see for total funded amount you can see the total funded amount with respect to that the figures are changing the values are changing and we can you know see the chart with different angles similarly we have different loans also here like if you want to see for good loan if you want to see for bad loan so from here also we can see different uh, you know uh, slice and dicing of the data then we can see this particular by grade also if you want to see you can see by grade if you want to see by state by state also you can see all right so not only this filters we have also at applied some interactive filters so let's say uh, you want to see for um, the term loan for 36 months so when i click on 36 months you can see that all the datas are changing right so in this way if i want to see for the employee length who is working more than 10 years so when i click here the values will be changing and you will be getting the entire result with respect to that similarly for less than one year 
similarly if you want to see by purpose okay so the loan is been taken for credit card so you can see with respect to that we can see the data similarly if you want to see for mortgage so who, what is the home ownership of that particular fellow so if he's on mortgage if he's on rent okay with respect to that the values are changing getting so this will give us a different angles to look over to the data and the client will be seeing the data for different different filters different fields which we are having and with respect to that he might be taking some business decisions so we will see how to create these how to build the data and to make it more dynamic because we don't want static dashboard dashboard should be dynamic where we can see the data with different angles right so now we will jump to the next dashboard that is details so when i click on the details dashboard so it will take me to a grid view and in this grid view we are showing all the loan data okay so with respect to a different loan id uh, we can see different uh, angles or different datas for that particular fellow how much is uh, what is his purpose of taking the loan what is his home owner what is his grade his subgrade then in that we can find out when the loan was issued then what is the amount funded to him from the bank what is his interest rate how much is the interest rate with the bank is giving the loan to that fellow then how much installment he is having monthly and with respect to that how much amount has been collected till date okay so with respect to that we can analyze and we can obviously add more fields if you want here i have just shown uh, eight to nine fields over here and you can see this is what how the you know uh, the grid view is performing or we can say a details tab is performing and here obviously we can find out which are good loans okay and we can take a you know grid and we can export it into excel if you want to see bad loans so bad loans are these are the total bad loans okay bad loans are nothing but we will see the terminology uh, it is nothing but the loan which is given and the people are not repaying the loan right in this way we will see the different functionalities all right so this is all about this particular end product which we will be designing and now what we will see uh, let's see what what we will be seeing in this complete entire video step by step so before moving ahead into our project i would like to introduce you to my website and this is available on top mid where i give different offerings so in that one is you can reach out to me personally for one to one call for you know career guidance in data analyst or you can reach out to me for interview preparation tips in both power bi and tableau and also you can reach out to me for one on one mentorship or mock interview as well and mock interview both in power bi and tableau uh, i will be able to help you in all of this and in this particular mock interview i will give you i will take your interview as, as well and i will give you the feedback also what you should improve and how was your interview with me getting or not and there is op available options for recording as well if you want to record uh, you can select the options and you can just uh, have an option where you will get the recording of this particular video as well all right and also i will provide some digital material as well here you can see uh, the power bi material is also available which includes all these topics which are which you can see in front of your screen and all these particular topics uh, those are already created by me and designed by myself okay and all these notes are very much helpful let's say you have a, a power bi interview two or three days later and you want to do a revision of all whatever you have learned so these are the uh, go to notes and ppts are available where you can just go through all of them interview questions are available of all rounds like technical non technical any non technical managerial rounds client rounds right and uh, also in technical level 1 level 2 scenario based questions are also available and i will also provide you the power bi 2 to 3 projects also right with all the dashboard files i will provide which you can add in your resume right uh, the raw material i will share with you the problem statement of that particular project as well right similarly you you can find the same for tableau for sql as well and all this consolidated is also available in data analyst complete material where you will uh, you will get to see all the data analyst tools which are available and in this also i will be providing you with all the handwritten notes printed uh, pdf notes will be also available Uh, with all the important topics and in this the main important thing is i will provide you the road map okay and the road map is designed with respect to current 2024 year with the latest technical uh, we can say techniques are added in that uh, and the uh, we can say what you should what topics you should learn that has been added and for all those topics i have mentioned the links of different courses of youtube videos of udemy which are best 
for that particular topic so you don't have to search and go around and look for those particular videos and which one to see what to see so these are hand picked by myself so it will it will not uh, we can see it will not waste your time in searching those you can just have to click and you can just start learning those particular topics and with these also projects are also included uh, in each tool so you can just click you can see you can read everything whatever you need over here and then uh, if you find it helpful you can go ahead and purchase it and you can see so last three months only i have started and you can see more bookings i have got and you know so i was the top rated in data uh, for uh, we can say 2023 here all right so similarly uh, right now 30 percent offer is going on only on data analyst material and is only valid up to 15th march 2024 okay and you can also read my different feedbacks also you can read about me as well over here getting not so at the end i will add the link in the description box of this particular video you can go ahead and visit if you find it helpful uh, you can just go ahead and buy it and also you can just click here and all the description is mentioned whatever is available in this material it is mentioned and if you have any questions you can reach out to me at this particular whatsapp number all right so let's move ahead with our video okay so uh, so this is a complete data analyst portfolio project and in the first part of this particular video we will see the ms sql server okay so we are not only going to connect our power bi to flat files but we will be connecting it to our ms sql server which we do in real time if you don't have ms sql server if you are using any other database like postgres or mysql not to worry you can import the data into that and then you can connect it to power bi if you don't have any server you can just connect it to flat file like you can directly connect to an excel file or a csv file and you can start performing the dashboard okay you you don't have to, you know uh, if you don't have the servers installed it is not that it will stop you from designing okay so first step which we will be seeing in ms sql server is we will import the data first okay then we will create a database okay with respect to that we will write some sql queries with respect to the problem statement which we are having we will generate the result we will store that result we will create a document and at last what we have to do is firing some sql queries with respect to the different business problem we will compare our results with all the dashboards which we are creating in power bi or in tableau or in excel and you can see this database queries can be worked in all other sql tools or sql databases just there are some few functions there are inbuilt functions it kind it might be some date functions which you have to change but all other some ANSI standard functions or standard functions which we are going to use will work in other databases also okay then next we will be saying the second part in this project is the power bi part okay and where in power bi we will be connecting our power bi to ms sql server we will see how to connect it how to bring the data in ms sql from ms sql server to power bi and then we will build the report all right and then obviously i just showed you the dashboard which we are going to build so this is the first dashboard that is the summary which we will be building from start and this will be our second that is overview dashboard and the third one is the grid view we will be building from start to end okay and the most important thing next is the problem statement so for each and every dashboard we have a different problem statements and with respect to these problem statements we are going to solve our business problem so we have the first problem statement for our dashboard that is first dashboard is a summary dashboard and in this dashboard as i showed you we are going to analyze mostly the key performance indicators or we can say requirements for key performance indicators which gives us the overall summary of the business how it is performing at higher level all right and the first key performance indicator which uh, the client wants us to analyze is the total loan applications okay so he wants us to understand and find the total number of applications that are received during that particular period and in addition to the total loan applications he wants us to identify how many are the month to date applications so in current month or in latest month how many applications have been received and to find out the month over month growth or we call that as mom that is nothing but by with respect to last month how many percentage of increase or decrease is there in the loan applications okay so this is the first kpi indicator second is the total funded amount the funded amount is nothing but 
how much amount of uh, the loan is given to that particular customer how much disbursement of that loan has been done to that customer okay and the same we have to find it for month to date as well as for month on month third one is total amount received total amount received is nothing but after funding the amount to that particular customer he have to pay or repay the back or repay the amount which he has been received back to the bank and we mostly do it by uh, you know uh, with respect to that interest rate he will be repaying that particular amount each monthly or we call it as emi with respect to installments each month he will be repaying that amount to the bank so we will also calculate how much is the total amount received back from that customer and we want it overall okay not for that customer but we will find it overall amount which has been received same for month to date and we will find month on month change for that then what is the average interest rate okay so overall what is the average interest rate that we are charging to our customers and what was the month on month and month uh, we can say month to date interest rate where that also we will be finding out then we have to find out debt to income ratio that is dti so this is a gauge or it is a measure from where uh, the uh, bankers identifies that how is the customer's financial health okay so dti is nothing but we called it as a debt to income ratio and from borrowers or that customer's financial health is identified from here and the bank decides whether we should give the loan to that particular fellow or not by seeing the dti of that particular fellow the same we are being uh, you know uh, we will be creating a kpi for this particular kpi also or we can say measure second in this same dashboard we are going to find out good loan and bad loans okay so good loans are those actually uh, which uh, the people who take the loans and they are repaying it uh, time to time or they are repaying uh, they have repaid completely fully they have played fully or they the account its current account that is the loan is ongoing and they are paying their installments correctly and bad loan are those bad loan those customers who have taken the loan but they are not paying their installments they have not paid the bank yet okay these are called as bad loan and with respect to that we will see how the good loan versus bad loans are performing and with respect to that we have to find out how many are the total bad loans or we can say total good loans their application percentage how much amount we have funded as a good loan how much amount we have received as uh, back from as a good loan that is same we are going to do for bad loan and at the third in this particular dashboard only we are going to find out the loan status grade view okay so in this grade view what we are finding out is with respect to loan status we are going to find out a chart of total funded amount total applications with respect to how what is the loan status okay and with respect to this problem statement i have created one more document here you can see in this i have in detailed mention uh, what is how what is the problem statement that we have received so i have not added everything in the uh, ppt but from here you can go ahead and you can learn this document or you can go through this document and then you will understand that what is the actual requirement for us so i will add this document in the description box you can download it is completely free not to worry about that okay so this is a problem statement of the first dashboard the second one we are going to go is through overview okay that is the second dashboard is overview dashboard in which we are going to deep dive in the data and we are going to find out for different charts how the or uh, we can see we have for different uh, data at different granularity we have to find out some uh, insights for our bank okay and in that we are going to design some different charts and the first chart which we are going to design is monthly trends by issue date okay so monthly trends by issue a date we have to create a line chart and from this the customer will identify or the uh, stakeholders will get an insight of seasonality and long term trends in uh, lending activities lending is nothing but the bank which we are or the bank which is giving the loan to the customer we called it as lending the loan to that particular fellow okay so these terms are actually a banking terms not to worry much about that i will be adding a domain knowledge document in uh, the description or uh, i will provide you the domain knowledge document to use from where you will learn all the domain knowledge of the this particular project uh, so what are the different terms used how the bank disburses this the loan what are the key measures they take in uh, account before giving the loan to that particular fellow okay so not to worry about that all the terminologies and all the domain knowledge document i will provide it to you 
and you will learn everything from that the second watch we are going to design in this is the regional analysis by state and here we are going to design a field map so with respect to different state how the activity is done then the third one is loan term analysis then here we are going to find out the donut chart so in this we are going to allow the client to understand how the distribution of loan is done across various loan lengths okay so at a loan length is nothing but the people are taking loan for 36 months or they are taking the loan for 60 months so with respect to that how is the trend of the loans okay then employee length analysis okay with respect to employee length is nothing but some people or employee who are working from last one year two year three year four year more than 10 years so with respect to their employee length in that organization or in that total career how much loan to, how much loan they are taking and how much loan bank is also giving to them so with respect to that they will understand that uh, with respect to that particular fellow uh, or we can say that particular fellow who is actually working how much amount of loan can be given to them right then the loan purpose so why we are taking the loan okay we have to provide a reason to the bank that uh, what is the purpose of taking the loan okay so, and with respect to that purpose also we are going to design some bar charts and do some metric analysis then home ownership so that particular fellow who is taking the loan whether he is owning his own home or it is on mortgage or it is his uh, or he is rented in that particular home or he is a tenant in that home right so with respect to that we are going to analyze everything and for all these charts the matrix which we have to show is the loan application total loan applications total funded amount and the total amount received okay i mean to say that on all these three all, all in these six charts whichever we are going to design the matrix to be shown are these three which are at the bottom of this particular ppt and i have already shown you how we are going to show we are going to design a parameter and with respect to that whenever we click all the values will be changing with respect to that particular metric okay so this was our second dashboard the third dashboard which we are going to design is a grid view or a details tab and in this we are going to show a comprehensive detail dashboard which provide a consolidated view and from that uh, we can see you know we will take a snapshot of key uh, metrics and the data points of that particular customer and we can generate a report from that and we can provide it to a higher management okay so these are all the problem statements and i have just showed you the document from that document you will be learning uh you know uh what is the deep dive or we can say a comprehensive loan uh problem statement which we have i've just mentioned a few points here but from there you will learn everything okay so you can go through the document for problem statement then next what are the functionalities you are going to learn in this complete project so we are going to use sql and we are going to use power bi so in front of your screen you can see these are few i am saying few functionalities which you will be learning at you am which are important but apart from this you will be also learning many more functionalities okay so i i didn't had space to add all of those and i didn't remember which i will be adding but more than this you will be learning so I request you to go through this complete video and I'm sure that you will be at the end of the video you will be very much uh, you will be taking so much of knowledge with you and so much of experience with you okay so these are the functionalities you can pause the screen and you can see what functionalities we are going to learn all right next what softwares we are going to use in this particular entire project the first we are going to use is MS office and in that we are going to use Excel which the version which I am going to use is 2021 version the server version which i am going to use for ms sql server is 19.0 and also we are using a sql server management studio which is 19.0.20209.0 okay and the power bi version is the june 2023 version which was the latest version which was released uh, by power bi okay or you can use the old version also but in this latest version we have a new addition called kpi card and we are going to use or we are going to make use of that kpi card in this particular power bi video okay so whatever the new updates are coming with respect to that we are going to design our dashboard so you will be updated what new functionalities are coming in the market for power bi all right next and the most important thing guys i know you like my video and uh, you people enjoy i see your comments those are very positive comments which give me motivation to create such videos but most of you just watch the video and you do not subscribe so i request you to please subscribe the channel 
so it is free for you but it will give you uh, give me more motivation to create such such videos and it will help me a lot and you people also it will help to reach out to more data enthusiasts okay so i request you to please like this video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends who are learning data analytics or who are in the uh, process of learning the data analytics all right so before starting with our first part that is with sql so i will give you a quick data walkthrough so this is the data which we are going to use for our analysis which is a financial loan data or we call it as a bank loan data also and here you can see the total rows which we are having is 38000 almost uh, yeah 38577 and the fields which we have in the rows are 24 so first we have is the id then we have address state so id is nothing but the loan id of that particular fellow then we have address state so that particular individual is belonging from which particular state the application type whether he is an individual application or he is a joint a particular fellow then the employee length uh, like he is working in an organization or he is in his career from how many years okay so for 9 years 10 years or 10 plus years or 3 years then what is his title okay in that particular company what is his particular title title or what is he uh, you know uh, working as an okay that is a mkc accounting or a contractor or whatever it is then what is the grade it is like a b c d what is the grade of that particular loan then the home ownership so the, in that particular what is uh, he living in or he is living in a mortgage home or he is living in a rented home or there are some other home also like we can say uh, uh, let's see so i will just apply a filter over here so there are some other also like he is living on other or he's it is his own home or we don't have any information of his own home ownership right then when was the date issued for that particular loan okay that is issue date and then what was the last credit pool date then what was the last payment date which he have done then what is his loan status whether the loan has been fully paid or whether it is a current loan or it is being charged off okay so charge off loan is nothing but it is a bad loan because if you are charged off is nothing but you are not paying your installments correctly and you are not repaying your loan which you have taken from your bank fully paid is nothing but that the loan has been fully paid and uh, the third one is the current is nothing but the loan is in ongoing process but you are paying that loan installments regularly right then what is the next payment date so next payment date this is the next payment date right so you can see at the next payment date then we have a member id then we have a purpose of loan why the loan has been taken for purchasing car or for purchasing any other things right you can see car the debt consolidation or medical purpose or some another major purpose or business vacation wedding whatever it is then we have a subgrade then the terms so for how many months the loan has been taken 60 months or 36 months then the verification status of that fellow whether that particular is verified not verified or uh, we can say uh, source verified okay then what is his annual income uh, okay how much does he make monthly with respect to that uh, his dti has been it's uh, like debt to income ratio it it has been decided and with respect to that only his loan is being given then we have installments like how much installments he is paying monthly okay like we can say emi then what is his interest rate how much interest rate has been charged to that particular fellow for taking that loan okay then how much loan amount he have taken how much loan that is been given to that particular fellow okay we can say uh, you can see here the loan which is given is you know uh, like 35000 4500 dollars then we have total loan repayment like how much loan has been uh, you know uh, or how much amount has been repaid from that particular fellow and you can see if it's given four thousand five hundred dollars he's repaying four thousand nine hundred eleven with respect to the interest rate which has been charged to him some people also pay some lump sum amount and close the loan so with respect to that how much the loan has been taken and how much the repayment has been done from that customer and from this the business actually the bank make the profits from the interest only so with respect to that we are going to see entire thing and the terminology or we can say how what is the actual uh, uh, we can see meaning of each and every uh, fields which we are using here 
we have created one more document for that that is the terminology that our field using data we can see what is the employee length what is the purpose of this uh, and what is the use of this for bank okay and the title why we are taking the title and what bank understand from that title okay so we can see home ownership the home ownership indicates the borrowing houses housing status what is is there and they use this field for collateral availability and borrower stability and homeowners may have lower default rates like the people who are actually owners of that home so it means that they have they are owning that house and the house they might have taken by taking some another loan and then they are repaying that loan so they mostly prefer to give home loan to or we can say loan to from the bank to homeowners right the same with respect to loan status next payment that you can learn everything from here why that field is been shown in that data and what is the purpose of that field to be present in that data and how the bank you know uh, utilize those data uh, for their knowledge okay so this is the terminologies which are used i will provide you this document not to worry about that also okay so these are some different terminologies and they have one more document which is called domain knowledge document okay so from here banking domain is something like uh, not all people have the knowledge of about this particular project or we can say domain so i have created a document you can read the document how the loans are given how the uh, bank uh, uh, process the loan how what measures they take before giving the loan to that particular fellow okay you can see process of granting the loan how the process is given or how the process is there for granting the loan and why the people or the reason uh, has been for analyzing the bank loan data why the bank is analyzing this data which has been provided to us okay with respect to that all are the things are present over here and with respect to that you can you know learn everything and you will acquire some domain knowledge so while we start actual analysis you will understand why we are analyzing this why what terms we are using what we can say terminologies we are using okay so i hope you are understanding so this is the complete about the data and the domain knowledge of this particular data so now we will start with our ms sql server so for that i will open my ms sql server so if you don't have ms sql server installed there are many videos available on youtube where you can search and you can see how to install the ms sql server and the ms sql server management studio as well okay so both are required so first you can just type here server management studio so you can see you will uh, get an ms sql server management studio i have just click on that so it will take some time to open and when it opens it will ask you some authentications you can see it is asking you a server name okay so this server name is automatically been taken so i have seen many people who are using the same server name which i have applied over here don't use the same server name this is the server name for my system okay you will uh, get your own server name when you install your uh, ms sql server in your own pc or in your own laptop or your own system so this is for me when i have installed you will get your own name when you install it okay so i will just click on connect so you the other options you have to keep as it is you don't have to apply any password or anything because this has been installed in local so whenever it is hosted by your client they will provide you the username and password but if it is present in your own local system you have installed it you don't have to provide any password you just have to click on connect so when you connect there are different uh, functionalities available here so you can see this is my server name and there are there are different folders available the first one is the database okay so when i click on this plus icon and when i expand this you can see there are different database which i have already created and which are available over here so what we have to do first is we will create a database first okay so now to create a database i will right click here and i will click on new database so as soon as i click here it is asking me what should be the name of the database so i will name as bank loan db okay so i will name it as bank loan database okay so you can name anything uh, you can either name a uh, loan database or bank database whatever you want okay so it is not compulsory that you should mention this name only then i will just click on okay okay so you can see the bank loan database has been created over here when i click on the plus there are different folders available over here also but now we have to import the data here you can see there are different tables available here but right now we don't have any tables there are just system tables which are auto created by creating this database but we have to you know import our external file into this particular database so how to do that so first i will click on this then i will right click here 
and i will create a new file okay so for that i will go in tasks okay right click go in task and you have an option called as import flat file okay so i will just click on this import flat file then i will just click on next and then here you have an option called browse okay so first i will browse my file from uh, here so i will be using a csv file okay this csv file i will provide you you can download in the description box the link will be there and always remember it should be a csv file you cannot import the excel file into our sql server management okay so i will just click on this and then i will click on open right so then what this is the new table name so what should be the name of the table so i will name it as bank loan data so i will rename the name of our file which is a bank which should be new name which will be shown into our database the file will be the financial loan but the new name which will be importing or we will be adding into our database will be bank loan data and then i will click on next so it is saying that the name cannot be different so when we are trying to import the file into our ms sql server we are getting actually this error and this error is showing that please check if the if it is running by another application means what the file which we have or which we are trying to import here it is already opened in excel we can we i will show you yeah so it is already opened here so i will just close this file i will first save and then i will close this file and i will click on ok and then we will try again so i will just click on next and now it has been importing here and here it is giving us some preview of 50 rows that in this type the file will be imported into our data okay or into our database so next i will just click on next and then we have got list of fields which are there into our uh, we can say csv file and the data type which uh, by default the sql have you know uh, managed to show us so here we will do some changes we will try to change some data types as per our requirement so first you can see id so as in our data always remember the id field which is there in our data is a primary key so each row will be having a unique key for that so i will just click it as, as a primary key and next you can see employee title it is allowing us null null means what in this employee title there are already some null values are present so don't worry about that that the data is not clean so there is an information or there are some information collected from bank that for few a few of the customers they don't know what is the employee title so it doesn't matter okay so what we will do wherever you see n varicare 50 we are going to change to varicare okay so wherever you, you see n varicare i will just drop it down and i will choose this as varicare 50 so wherever you see it you have to change it so i will just do it quickly so for employee title also we will change it next year also we will change it and here as well so for a few more we have to change it again okay you can scroll down and for all of them we have changed to n varicare so from n varicare 50 you have changed it to varicare 50. 50 is nothing but the length of that particular field so how many text can be taken by that field so up to 50 text it can be taken okay now what we will do i will just click on next <laughs> and then i will click on finish okay so now it it is giving us error for inserting the data so let's see what is the error so when you click here you are seeing that error is there in column 23 and it is for total payment and it is giving us an error that the type string for the data source cannot be converted to small integer okay means this is taking as a small int we have to convert it into something else okay because the value is too large to take it as a small integer okay that is for column 23 total payments i will just go okay i will go back i will go back again and it is for total payment here so we will change this small int and we will take it as int only so for integer it will take maximum value for us okay so we will do this for loan amount also because loan amount also have big values so i will do it for loan amount also as int and and then i will just click on next then again i will click on finish so again it is giving us an error so invalid employee length okay so it is giving us invalid employee length uh column in value column length from bpc for call it five okay so uh so employee column length we have to increase for a few so i will just click on ok go back go back 
and so if we open our file here so let's open our file first so okay so this is our file and i will just increase the column size so here you can see there are a few employee titles that might be greater than 50 okay so what we will do for our employee title we will increase the size first okay, let's do that so for employee title let me increase it to 100 okay so i will just increase this to 100 okay similarly let's see if there are for any other also okay it looks good then i will just click on next finish still it is giving us an error so it has been opened in the another value so i will just save this so it is opened in another application it cannot be opened so i will just click on ok again i will go back again go back then i will just click on next and then i will click on finish okay so it should be not opened in background and we have to increase some of the length so now you can see we have got an operation complete so many people receive this kind of errors and they message me in comments and all those things sometimes i am not able to answer the comments but you have to click on error and then you have to find and you have to read carefully each and every line what is the error which you are getting okay so with respect to that after reading 50 percent of your problem is solved so if sometimes if it is not solved you can reach out to me i will help you okay then i will just click on close okay so now here you cannot see any table which has been created so i will right click over here and i will click on refresh okay so after i click on refresh and i drop down this table so it is expanding and you can see the data has been added over here so let's see if the data is visible in our query or not for that i will right click here and i will select new query okay so once i do that a uh, new query window will be opened over here and here we will be writing our sql query so i will write query to retrieve all the data that is select star from the name of the table that is bank loan data okay this is our bank loan data and i will just run this query so as soon as i run this query you can see we have received 38576 rows the same rows which we have you know i have shown you in the raw data and all the fields which are there we are able to see here correct so these are the data so i will just open the data and i will again show you so how many data we actually have and how much is been received so here you can see 24 fields are there and if i see the total rows are there 38577 so it is calculating the header also so id is also one row which is been, been calculating so if you neglect that row it is how many 38576 okay so if i calculate from here only so you can say it is 38576 and the same number of rows are retrieved here that is 38576 okay so you have to cross check and you have to check if each and every field has been calculated or it has been present or it has been brought into our calculation or not okay so in this way we have imported our data the next next task for us is to you know uh, start firing the sql queries with respect to our uh, we can say problem statement okay so now i will take a new query to write on new line and and i will show you our problem statement first so let's go to our problem statement so you can see here this is our first problem statement and in that first problem statement we have to find out the key performance indicators and here it is asking us first to find out the total loan applications okay so now to find out the total loan applications the total loan applications how we can find it out so come to our sql and here we can find out the total loan applications so we know that id here id field is a what we can see a primary key and it is different for each and every row so number of applications is been drawn each row is an application okay so here each row is an customer application which gives an information of that customer who has applied for the loan and the bank has dispersed the loan for that side. okay so we will find it out from id and for that we will write a query as select and here we have to take count so i will take select count of we have to calculate it for id so i will just type here id from from which data that is bank loan data okay and i will just select this entire statement and then i will run the query so as soon as i run the query you can see 38576 are the total number of applications that is nothing but total number of rows in our data and that is nothing but the total number of applications 
but at the top you can see no name the column or the output of this particular sql does not have any column name so i will give you an alias over here so alias is nothing but a temporary name which we are giving for an hour output okay so i will give an as and it is nothing but total applications okay so these are what our total loan applications so i will just modify it as total loan applications and now i will select and you can see an execute button is there i will just run this now you can see the header has uh, received and uh, we can say uh, column name and these are the total loan applications now guys what you have to do is you have to save this query okay you have to save this query and you have to also save this result so how to save the result so i will show you the document which i have created so the query doc you can see here so this is a query doc and what we are doing here is for bank loan reports that is the first dashboard for kpis we have determined the total loan application so i will save the query over here and then i will save the result over here okay so what you have to do here is i will just show you sql so you have to take screenshot of this particular uh, we can say uh, the value or the results which you are getting so for that you have to, you can use a snipping tool okay we you have a snip tool in every system or if you want you can use any other tool which you have so take a new and just you just have to select this okay you just have to select this then if you open here the value has been selected you have to copy it from here and you have to paste it in your document okay so in this way you have to save your results and you can just select this control c and you can copy the query also and you can save it in your document so why to save this okay why we have why we are saving this particular query and why we are solving this first in sql so many people ask me that uh, sir why we are doing this why we are firing the sql queries and also we are showing it in our dashboards in our our power bi reports and again we are doing it in sql also so always remember whatever values which we are showing in our power bi or in our tableau or in our excel dashboards it is not compulsorily true that it is showing a correct value okay because the tableau and power bi is a garbage in and garbage out means whatever we are bringing into visualization it will show some value for that but how we will prove to our client that the values which are shown in those dashboards are correct or not so for that what we are doing with respect to the problem statement which we are having we are firing some sql queries and with respect to sql queries whatever result we are getting we are matching those result with our dashboard numbers whichever we are showing to our client if the numbers are matching correctly then and then we can say that the dashboard develop is in correct way or the developed dashboard can be given to a productions uh, we can say to our higher management to our client and it can be pushed to production servers otherwise if the qa or if the testing is not done we cannot push it ahead okay so that's the reason we have to check with our original data that which comes from our databases and to check it we have to fire some sql queries with respect to our problem statement which is given to us by our client so we have to save the results okay so first always remember we have to save the results in this way in the real time also we have to save the results because uh, let's say you are a developer today tomorrow a new developer is working on that project and he want to see what queries were used to fire what were the you know different function used to see whether that values were correct or not and this also second use is all what that you have to send this to your client also because whatever dashboard values you are showing those are matching here and this is the proof that those are matching and that's why they have sent you or you have sent this dashboard to your client for actual use and taking the business insights from there and taking the business decisions also from there because with respect to these reports only big decisions are taken and these big decisions should not be incorrect so that for that we have to cross check if you are showing the correct values or not okay i hope you are understanding why we are firing the sql queries here okay and why we are creating this type of document here all right so the document format might be different from company to company so i have shown you a simple format but always remember we have to create a document of testing whatever we are doing the unit testing of our dashboards all right and first we are doing this in sql and then we are creating it in power bi sometimes first we create the power bi dashboard and then we fire the sql queries to check if it is there or not so it depends from company to company and from client to client how they want it all right so this is for uh, total loan applications from bank loan data correct
now we will see our next problem statement in that only he is asking us to find out the month to date okay so now how to find out the month to date so if we see into our data the data which we have i will show you in the excel sheet so i will show the excel sheet here i will just take it at top and i will apply some filters over here so whatever we are going to find out the month on month uh, total application month to day total applications we are going to see it with respect to issue date issue date is means when when was that particular disbursement done for that particular fellow means let's say that any fellow have or any customer have come to the bank and he is asking for some loan so issue date is nothing but on that particular date the loan has been disbursed to, or it has been given to that particular fellow so this is our issue date so on, on issue date only we are doing all the calculations we are keeping it as simple as possible you can do it for other dates also but at this project we are keeping it as simple as possible so if you see in the issue date we are seeing the data only for 2021 and that all for 12 months so the latest month which we are having in our data is december and that is also for year 2021 okay so what we will be doing is uh, we will be using the same trick so we have a december month over here so december is the last month so for december month only we have to find out the uh, sales so I, what i will do not sales the total loan application so i will just copy this and i will paste this over here and now we have to find it for last month so i will check or i will add a filter condition where month okay where month of issue date because i told you we are going to find it for issue date is equal to 12 okay so what does this mean so we are finding out the total applications but we have applied a condition that the month of issue date should be 12 it should be for december but december name of that or we can say count of december month is 12 so we have found we have taken it as 12 and if there are multiple years okay let's say we have 2020 year 2021 year also then we have to add one more filter condition over here and okay and where month of issue date is equal to 12 and year of issue date okay year of issue date should be equal to what 2021 okay so this is the way we are solving this so when i run this you are getting an app uh, the total number of application that is 4314 that is for that month or we can say 12 month that is nothing but december month but it should be named as month to date so i will rename this as month to date a loan application and when i run this we can see it is month to date total loan application is 4314 so i have taken year of issue date as 2021 because if in our data there are multiple years are there and for multiple years there might be multiple december months but we have to find it for latest year whichever will be the latest year so if you are going in next year that is for 2022 you have to mention your 2022 we can also make it dynamic by you know uh, making the maximum value whichever the month is having so you can do that also in this query if you want to go advanced you can you know instead of hard coding the values over here you can go ahead and make it dynamic by taking the maximum month automatically okay in this query this can be modified over here all right so next thing what we have to do we have to find out month on month okay so always remember month on month is nothing but if you see our problem statement here we have to find out month on month sales so month on month is nothing but how your bank loan uh, disbursements are done with respect to last month and current month so let's say for last month the value is this much for this month the value is this much so find out the percentage increase or percentage decrease right so in this way we have to calculate it but we will only find out the last month that is previous month to date. So i will just click here and i will click here as previous month to date alone applications so for previous month is nothing but now is december the latest month so last month will be what 11 that is nothing but november so when i run this query you will get the value as 4035 that is nothing but previous month to date application that is pmtd so if you know previous month if you know current month we can find out the month on month as what it is the formula which we have to calculate the month on month applications are that is nothing but m month to date loan applications minus previous month to date loan applications divided by previous month to date loan applications 
okay so this is the formula which we have to calculate so we are not going to find out month to month on month calculations for each and every we can find out that that query will be somewhat we can say tricky and i don't want you to get confused by using the large number of queries or complex queries so keep it as simple as possible you can do this uh you know manually also like finding we have one to date value we have pmtd and we have pmtd here also you just you can just calculate the uh, percentage over here so we will keep it as, as simple as possible for now okay so in this way we are going to find out just month to date and previous month date right and we have also find it out and we have completed our first kpi all right so next is what in this way only we will find it out for total funded amount okay so now this was for total loan applications now we will find it out total for funded amounts i will just close this for now and if you can see i have recorded here all the results so this is for month to date so you can see i have not changed the column name over here so this should be what month to date then our output will change over here so i will do that uh, when i send you the query document so you have to take the those snapshots only which i am using okay or which we are showing in your or i am showing in this particular video all right so now next what we have to do uh, go ahead is find out for the total funded amount so i will run our this query again to see the data so total funded amount is nothing but this is what you can see here the loan amount so loan amount is nothing but amount which is given to that particular customer that is nothing but the amount which is funded by our bank to that customer so we are going to use this particular column to find it out so we will make change in this query only or i will just write here so we will be finding at sum of sum of loan amount so we have to take sum of loan amount okay we are not taking count we have to find out the sum of the total amount which has been dispersed that is nothing but total funded amount and we will name it as total funded amount from bank loan data so as soon as i run this query so you will get a value over here that is almost 435 million of uh, loan amount has been disbursed in that particular complete year okay and now so again we will record this result next we have to find it for month to date okay so to find out month to date again we will add a query over here that is we will add a filter that is for month okay so month of issue date okay on that particular date issue date is equal to 12 that is nothing but december and year should be what year of issue date should be equal to 2021 that is nothing but the latest year and when i select and run this query you can see 59.53.9 million that is nothing but 54 million amount was disbursed in this particular current year month that is nothing but the latest month and this is nothing but month to date so i will just name this alias of this uh, output column as month to date and when i run you can see month to date total funded amount is 53.4 million okay or we can say 54 million next we have to find out for previous month to date so we will just modify this query only or i will just select this query control c and i will take a new query here and here we have to write out pmtd and here we have to just take 11 that is nothing for last month and when i run this particular query and when i execute the you can see it is what 47 or we can see it is 47.7 million okay so in this way we have found out month to date and previous month to date and from here you can find out the month on month total funded amount okay so in this way we have calculated for total funded amount okay if you are understanding one the next are same the query just we have to modify next we have to find out the total amount received so i will just delete this first and again i will run this query so the total received amount so we are which column we are going to use so you can see the total payment column so this total payment column is nothing but the payment which was which is received back from the customer in terms of different different installments monthly yearly and with respect to that it is nothing but the total amount received to the bank okay and from this only they do the profits okay so this is this amount is important so with respect to different interest rate the values are or the amount is taken back from the customer so let's calculate it so for that we will use select again select sum of what total payment so total payment 
that is nothing but amount which is received back to the pay bank from from bank loan data okay and this we will name an alias as total total what should it mention total amount received okay okay and then we will run this query and when i run this you can see 473 million amount has been received back from the customers okay so you can see in this query also i am saving everything okay so you can see the total uh, amount received is 473.09c3 so save the results whatever the query you are firing you have to save the results so that we can compare later with our dashboard so that whether we are getting the correct results or not okay and i have told you why we are doing this all right so now we have to find it for the current month that is for month to date so where here where here we'll write as a month of issue date month of issue date is equal to 12 and year of issue date should be equal to what 2021 because that is the date which we are having see for currently for our scenario this is not required but this i am telling you because if the data the data which we have in our uh, database if it is greater than or if it's having multiple years of data then we have to mention from which month we have to retrieve the data okay so which year we have to retrieve sorry so i will just select this and here you are getting the month to date so i will just mention as month to date as an output alias and here you can see 58 million amount has been received back in this current current month okay if you want to find out for previous month to date so i will just copy this query and you can run it again here and just you have to mention your previous month to date and this should be 11 that is for november month and when i run this query it is 50 million so with respect to current month uh, or we can say previous month uh, the current month or we can say the latest month uh, amount received was greater okay that was uh, almost 58 million and in this only 50 million was there in november month so in this way we are taking the insights from this particular data and we are saving our results obviously okay now next what we have to find out is average interest rate okay so i will just close this everything and i will run this so when i execute this we have a column here called as interest rate so here you can see int underscore rate it is nothing but the interest rate so for that we have to find out average interest rate we don't have to take some here so we will write select and here we are taking average okay so average interest rate so this is the name of field in our data same we have to type here that is int underscore rate and we will name it as average interest interest rate okay from bank loan data okay and when i run this you can see we are getting an average interest rate of 0 0.12 okay so now we have to convert it to percentage then here we have to multiply by 100 okay so if you are multiplying this by 100 we will be getting a perfect amount and now when i run this oops so now when i run this you can see we are getting a value as 12.04 the same value which we will be saving again we will be comparing so if you want up to two decimal points you can give here a round uh, we can see you can use a round function over here or a decimal function so i will not go into that much okay so you can use a decimal function and you can show the result out really up to two decimal points okay okay so if still you are i will give you an example on how to convert it into up to two decimal points so there are different functions available by which you can use you can use uh, a decimal function you can use a format function or you can use a round function also so we will try it by using round function so round function takes two argument first is the value which we have to convert it into a rounded format and the second argument is up to how many digits you want it okay so first i will write a round function over here so first value is which value you have to convert so this is the value which we have to convert which we have already taken second comma second value is up to how many uh, uh, we can say digits you want it so let's say you want two digits and i will close the bracket okay so this is for round function which we have closed the bracket and when i select this and when i run this you can see we are only getting 12 that is only two digits but we want more two digits after the decimal point so i will mention here as four 
and now when i run this you can see we are getting a value as 12.05 so in this way you have to modify your query with respect to the requirement and which is very much easy actually okay so in this way we have found it out for interest rate and it is nothing but an average interest rate so overall okay for all the data so now we have to find it for month to date okay so for current month what is the average interest rate so for that here i will change it as first month to date underscore that is average which is an alias a temporary output name and here we will write our filter condition that is where where we are going to limit the data here that is for month of issue date for month of issue date it should be equal to 12 and year should be what year of issue date should be should be equal to 2021 okay and then i will select this and i will run this query so if you can see for month to date it is 12.36 so the interest rate has been increased to 12.36 for this current month so let's say if you want to find it for last month so if you want to find it for last month we have to mention your previous month to date and here we have to take it 11 and now when i run this query and if you can see it is 11.94 so out of overall average and with respect to current month also the last month's average interest has gone down okay so with respect to this this is an important insight for our bank also that in last month the total disbursements which were done for them the average interest rate was very much low okay and in next or in current month it was again high so so always remember the higher the average or higher the interest rate it is very much beneficial for the bank but it is not beneficial for the customer like us okay so the bank always make profit based on the what are the interest rate which we are giving to that particular customer all right so this is what uh, for average interest rate the next we have to find it for the debt to income ratio that is for dti and this is nothing but a dti is nothing but based on this particular value only uh, the bankers or the people in the bank decide whether uh, we should give the loan to that customer or not so actually they they check the financial health of that particular customer okay so now we will do or we will uh, write a complete query next okay first i will just run this query and i will show you which column we are going to use so you can see we have a value or called as a dti so the same column which we are using going to use to select our or calculate our average so i will just select we want average here okay average of dti okay very simple and we are going to multiply it again by 100 because here you can see it is the points are in decimals and we want as average dti okay we'll name it as average dti from bank loan data okay and when i run this again you can see 13.32 so if you want again for two decimal numbers only then you can round this and to four okay this in this way you are rounded this and you can when i run this again you can see 13.33 is the value and if you find to want to find out it for only current month then we are going to apply some filter condition where month of issue date month of issue date is equal to 12 and year of issue date is equal to 2021 all right and this is nothing but month to date average date or sorry month to date average dti and now we will run this and you can see for this current month it is 13.67 okay and next if i run again so it is considered that higher is the dti it is good for that particular customer okay so then we will go ahead and see again uh for previous month okay, so i will just see from previous month it is nothing but we have to take here 11 and when i run this you can see it is 13.3 all right so in this way we have to calculate our values so for current month previous month and overall so in this way we have completed our dashboard that is key performance indicator that is at the top which we are going to show okay so one thing important over here i i told you that the dti should be uh if it is higher then it is good so actually that is incorrect so i want to correct my statement over here that the dti should be not very much high also 
and it should not be very much low also if it is very much high then you are not able to manage your payments and all those things and if it is very much low means that you are not able to you know uh, work on your finances and all those things so it is considered that 30 to 35 or 36 percent depending upon each and every bank 30 to 35 or 20 25 so this range is considered as a better dti okay so uh, it is it shouldn't be not too high or it should not too low so with respect to the banking domain knowledge which i have gained i am telling you this particular information so i hope you are understanding that so now next in our same dashboard we have good loan versus bad loan kpis and in that for good loan we have to find out the good loan application percentage and in the bad loan we have to find out the bad loan application percentage and with respect to that some other more kpis we have to find out over here so to do that what we have to do actually over here is so i will just show you uh, what is actually what is meant by good loan and what is meant by bad loan so i will just delete this first okay and and i will execute this so we have a field called over here called as a loan status so just let me find out that field which is there where it is okay you can see here we have a loan status over here so uh just select i will just open this particular as select loan status okay from bank loan data okay and i will run this okay so you can see there are different loan status available that is fully paid is there charged off is there then we have uh there may be one more so if you can see there is current is also there so totally if there are three loan status which we have if you see in excel sheet also i will show you there are different loan status which we have are three that is charged off current and fully paid so out of all these loan status these are uh, the good loan and bad loan are decided on the loan status only so the good loan are those loans uh, whose loan status is current and fully paid okay so why we say this as good loan fully paid means what whatever the loan which is taken by that particular customer from that particular bank he have fully paid that loan with respect to whatever installations or whatever whatever the lump sum amount he's paying <laughs> So he have fully paid his loan amount. So it falls under fully paid and fully paid loan, and it is which is good for uh, bank, right? So that's the reason it it has been categorized in good loan. Second one is current. Current is nothing but that the people are who, who have taken the loan, and currently they are repaying their loan uh, with respect to whatever tenure they have taken and with respect to whatever monthly installment they have. So regularly they are paying the loan and they are repaying their particular loan to their particular bank so that is also good so that also falls under good loan and the third category is charged off so now charged off is something that those customers who have taken the loan but who are not repaying their particular installments who are not paying the loan there are defaulters who are which are there on on those particular peoples and they are not giving the money bank to the or uh, to the bank again okay so what what happens is these are bad loans okay so the the bad loans are not good for bank they are reducing their profits okay their money is been okay in with it customers and they are not repaying it back that's why we have decided it into two good loan and bad loan so in good loan there are two categories or two loan status that is current and fully paid and for bad loan it is charged so i hope you have understood and with respect to that only now we are going to find out the uh, good loan and bank bad loan percentages so for good loan what we will do first we have to find out the uh first what we are going to find out is uh total number of application percentage how many total number of percentage of applications are being received for bad loan and good loan both so for good loan we will write a query for our percentage as i will write it as select so i will write a query and then i will explain you the query so i will write select and then i will uh, take on next line as count so we have to find out the count of the applications with respect to fully paid and current divided by the total applications which has been received so count so we have to take uh, you know in account so i will first take a bracket over here one more and here we will take uh, we have to consider only two loan status which i have just explained you and for that i will write a case statement so case when okay so when loan status okay so when loan status if it is equal to fully paid okay if it is equal to fully paid and make sure you are writing this currently because this is case sensitive so if it is fully paid or 
the loan status is equal to i will just copy this again if loan status is equal to current okay so if our loan status fall in this back bracket then what we have to take then we will take id okay then we will take id that is nothing but the id from our data and we will end this okay then i will close this bracket and then i will close the bracket for count okay and we have to divide this by total count okay that is nothing but count of id okay and this should be named as what or we will name this particular output as good loan percentage okay and we want to be retrieved from bank loan data okay and now when i run this particular query you can see we are getting here zero okay so first uh, we will just solve this why we are getting here zero because we are finding out the percentages over here so we have to multiply this total say, statement total division value we have to multiply it by 100 okay and 100 100 is multiplied at numerator so this is our numerator this is our denominator so we will multiply our count by 100 over here so i will multiply it by 100 over here and now when i run this query you can see 86 percentage so we are getting a value that is 86 percentage of good loan has been dispersed okay so in this way we are finding out the values okay so this is how this works is count of case case is nothing but a case statement when we are grouping any two values so here we are grouping what loan status is equal to fully paid and loan status is equal to current and then we have to end this and we are dividing it by total number of count and this is nothing but a good loan percentage and we are taking it from bank data and when we run this entire query we are getting the percentage as 86 percent okay so in this way you have to find out the query all right so i hope you have understood the next with respect to our problem statement is we have to find out the good loan applications so this is very simple so i will just delete this so we have to find out how many are the good loan applications so good loan application is nothing but count of id we have to take okay count of id from where we have to take we have to take it from bank loan data okay so now this will give us the total count of applications but we want only for good loan that is for fully paid loan status and the current loan status so we will apply and filter over here for loan status okay so for where loan status is equal to what fully paid <coughs> or the loan status is equal to what or the loan status is equal to current okay and now when i run this query you can see 33243 almost uh, more than 86 percent right which we, we calculated just the percentage value so many applications are for good loan okay so which is a good thing so from here we will give an alias here as good good loan good loan applications okay and when i run this query you can see the good loan applications are 33243 so we have to save this okay so always remember to save this that is 33243 we have to save the values which we are okay firing with respect to our data okay whatever the query result we have we are getting because we have to compare it later with our power bi dashboards also right so we have saved this as 33243 now next we have to find out the good loan funded amount with respect to our next <coughs> next uh, whatever statement we are having or the problem statement is good loan funded amount so uh, we will modify the same query because we want this to be you know instead of writing this big also you can just write loan status in function you can use in fully paid comma current so there are multiple ways to write whichever is convenient for you and simpler for you you can write that okay so now we have to find out the uh, funded amount so funded amount is nothing but we have to take sum of we, have, we already know no, what is the funded amount that is nothing but loan amount okay so this is the loan amount and this is nothing but good instead of good loan application it is good it should be good loan funded amount good loan funded amount okay and when i run this particular query you can see this is the good loan funded amount so and we have to save the query results over here okay so this is a good loan funded amount value 
ओके नेक्स्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू आर प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट गुड लोड टोटल रिसीव्ड अमाउंट ओके सो टोटल अमाउंट रिसीव्ड इज नथिंग बट इट इज नथिंग बट टोटल पेमेंट सम ऑफ टोटल पेमेंट ओके सो सम ऑफ टोटल पेमेंट एज गुड लोन टोटल पेमेंट रिसीव और रिसीव अमाउंट नाउ वेन आई रन दिस क्वेरी यू कैन सी वी आर गेटिंग फॉर अगेंस्ट गुड लोन वी आर गेटिंग फोर थर्टी फाइव मिलियन रिसीव अमाउंट ओके सो आई एम सेव्ड है सेव्ड ए रिजल्ट सो यू कैन सी फंडेड अमाउंट वॉज थ्री सेवेंटी मिलियन एंड वी आर गेटिंग बैक हम मच फोर थर्टी फाइव मिलियन दैट मीन्स वॉट बैंक इज मेकिंग प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम दिस गुड लोन सो दे हैव इन्वेस्टेड थ्री सेवेंटी मिलियन इन द गिविंग द लोन्स एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड इन रिटर्न दे आर गेटिंग फोर थर्टी फाइव मिलियन which is huge amount if you take the difference in between and whatever difference value you are getting that is nothing but profit which the bank loan have made all right so the good loans are always good for the bank now we have to go ahead and find out for bad loans and for bad loans the loan status is what charged off okay so with respect to first we have to find out the total percentage of bad loan okay and in this case we will be finding it for uh, only if uh, the same case statement we are going to use so we i will already i already have the query over here i will just run this i will not write it again okay so now what we are going to take is for bad loan we have to take count when the uh, what we can say loan status is charged off okay and then we have multiplied it by 100 and we have taken the count of id we are dividing it by count of id from bank loan okay. so when i just run this query you can see we are getting as 13.82 as a value okay if you want to round it you can use a round function over here okay so not to worry on that also so in this way we are finding out the uh, what we can say total bank bad loan percentage so bad loan for the loan status is charged off which is not good for banks help okay so in this way we have found out and next again you have to save the query over here all right next we have to find out the total amount which is been funded or which we have to find out first total applications of bad loan okay so for that what i will do quickly i will write a query over here select count of id from <laughs> bank loan data and this is nothing but we will name an alias as bank bad loan applications okay and here where loan status should be what is equal to charged off right and now we will run this query particularly Okay, so you are getting and matches as as. Okay, so here from should be over here. Okay, and now when I run this query, you can see five thousand, or we can say almost five thousand three hundred applications are there, which are bad loan applications. So in this particular year, the bank has given loan to five thousand more than five thousand people who are which is not good for bank. Okay. next what we have to find out is uh, we have to find out the bad loan funded amount how much loan the bank has given as an bad loan so we will change this to sum of loan amount okay so, so we'll take it as sum of loan amount this is nothing but bad loan funded amount okay and when i run this particular query you can see 65 million amount has been given as a bad loan okay and now this is a funded amount so how much bank have received again so we will see out of 65 how much it has been received again so for that we will name it as amount received okay and from here instead of loan amount we will type here as total payment okay and now when i run this query you can see 37 million only okay so out of 65 million you can see only 37 million of amount has been received back so this is very bad for bank sale they are not making your profit they are losing their money over here right so that's the reason these types of loans are called as bad loan because the customers are not paying back their money or they are not paying their installments or whatever 
things to the bank again after taking the loan so these are called as bad loan applications okay so this is something which banks should avoid and this is a huge amount which should be taken care by banks after or they should increase their measures of giving the applications okay they should do an investigation of that particular customer whether we should give him loan or not so that's the reason many times a bank sees credit reports right civil scores and all those things okay and with respect to that only they will give you the loan if the civil score is correct then they will understand that this fellow will be able to give our money back with respect to different installments okay so this is the bad loan applications okay so now next what we have to find out is we have to find out our uh, loan status grade view okay so this is very simple for loan status grade view uh, we have we want different measures to be analyzed over here so in respect to that uh, we will see what measures first we will analyze first we have to analyze loan status loan count total amount received funded loan so for that what i will do i will just copy this query and I will paste it over here and I will explain you uh, what the what is written in this particular query so with respect to the loan status instead of looking at good loan and bad loan for all the loan status how the bank is performing so first we have to find out the total loan amount that is nothing but total application so we will name it as total applications okay and it is nothing but total loan applications okay so with respect to that loan status how many are the low total loan applications that is nothing but count of ID how much are the total amount received that is nothing but total payment how much is the funded amount that is total amount what is the interest rate that is interest rate multiply 100 to convert it into percentage dti and where we are taking it from bank loan and we are grouping it by uh, loan status because whatever uh, we are taking over here that is whatever aggregations we are taking with respect to any dimension field we have to always group it by okay that is nothing but we are taking a groups of that and then we are aggregating that so this is the compulsory field which we have to add over here if we are using any dimension field in retrieving the data from our database so when i run this query you can see we are getting with respect to fully paid fully paid applications are 32000 current means only almost 1100 applications are there who are yet uh, still paying their loan but they are paying their loan and they are paying their installments correctly okay means they are not doing the things like they have you know they are not paying the installments but charged off is something the bank should worry about okay so these two are very good you can see the performance is also good and they are gaining profits from here but they are losing money here right so with respect to that we have to find out the month to date and previous month to dates also so like month to date how much amount is received and on the last month to date how much amount is been received okay uh, not last month to date month to date amount received and month to date amount funded so for that we have written this query so if i if i show you so this is the query which we are writing over here and this is nothing but we are taking the loan status and sum of amount that is nothing but sum of total payment which has been received and we will name it as total month to date and total month to date funded amount and just we are writing a where condition over here that we want it only for month of 12 that is nothing for month of december which is the last month in our data and when we run this query so it will give us for current month okay so how the uh, loan is received how much amount is received back for current month and how much it was funded so with respect to that it can be seen for fully paid current at charge down all right so i have not uh, written this query because it will take some more time to write and type the query so i've just copied this and i have explained you uh like what we are showing here and it is not very much hard it's just a normal retrieving of the columns and with respect to that we are writing some good syntaxes over here okay so the prerequisite we uh, you should know for learning the power bi projects and all the other projects is you should know sql and most of the work is done on sql because almost 30 to 35 percent of weightage is taken by sql in data analyst portfolio projects yeah. all right so this is what uh, we have done for our first dashboard okay so this is where the problem statement of our, of our first dashboard that is nothing but a summary dashboard we also called it as a kps dashboard because all the summary we have mentioning there at or, or we can say at a higher level how the business is performing all right so now next what we have to do is we have to find it for the second dashboard that is overview dashboard so we will move ahead to build our queries for the second dashboard that is overview dashboard and in this we have to uh, you know do some charts or for the charts we are going to build some queries 
so these charts are actually to be built in dashboards but with respect to our query we will just get all the data in the grid view okay so first we have to find out the monthly trends by issue date okay so by issue date what are the monthly trends and for all these particular charts we have to you know analyze this matrix you can see at the bottom these metrics are to be analyzed that is how many are the total loan applications for monthly trained funded amount and the total amount received okay so now we will uh, take our sql query and i will just we will write a query over here so first i will just delete this and then i will run this query to see our entire table okay so just increase this and now here you can see uh, this is our table and now with respect to the select or we can say issue date we have to find out the monthly print so i will just write a query over here first and then i'll explain you so select okay so now we have to build take here different columns so first we have to uh, know the month of that particular date okay so to retrieve the month name of that particular uh, we can say date we have to use a function called date name okay so i will use a date name function and the first argument which it takes is interval so interval is nothing but we have to find it for a month okay so i will write here month comma and which is the date for which date so it will be for issue date okay issue date i will close this bracket comma then what we want we want count that is total application that is nothing but count of id because count of id is what total application we will name it as total loan applications okay then we want to find out the second metric is what total funded amount okay so funded amount is nothing but sum of loan amount and we name it as total funded amount okay then we want to find out the total amount received okay so that is nothing but sum of payment or we can say total payment right these are the things which we want to bring and we want to bring it or retrieve it from the bank loan data okay and we have we have to retrieve it from bank loan data and always remember whenever we are taking any dimension and when we are calculating it with respect to some aggregation we have to take the group by so i will just take this and i will group it by okay and we will group it by with this particular text and next okay i'll just reduce this and i will order it by same let's see control e. okay and when i run this particular query so you can see we have an error over here so we have to apply the comma over here okay and now i will run this so you can see we have uh, received with respect to each month what are the different loan application total funded amount and total amount received so here we will name an alias because we don't have the column name so we will name it as month name okay and when i run this now again you will get a month name over here but when you see at this month names we cannot see it with respect to january so the january is the first month so with respect to serially january to december we are not able to see so what we have to do though is if we are, we are using order by function here but order by is only ascending by default if you are not writing anything here it is ascending and if you write here descending so when, when i execute this query it is giving us with respect to alphabetical order okay we don't want that we want with respect to month or we can say number of month so for that what we will do we will add one more column over here and i will name it as month of issue date okay so what this particular will do us this particular will give us an output as the number of that particular month okay and what i will do i will just remove this instead of date name we will order it by month date okay and we have to also group it by this particular thing that is control c and we will paste it over here and we will add one more form out here because whatever dimensions we are using we have to group it by those dimensions and i will just select this and i will run this and now you can see i will just give the name of the alias as month number okay and i will run this 
so once i run this you can see we are getting from january february in serial because it is sorting or it is giving us with respect to month number and from here we can take an insight of each month how the total loan applications are there what is the funded amount and what is the total amount received okay and this result we are going to compare with with our dashboard so whatever we are going to show on dashboard we are going to compare our result and we are going to see if we on the dashboard also we are going to see the same values or not and if they are same that we can go ahead and uh, you know show that dashboard to our client if it is not showing the same values then we will come to know that yeah there is something wrong in our dashboard and we have to build it correctly okay and in the same we have to create a document okay so save this query and create a document so that all the results are saved so that you can again compare it with your uh, dashboard all right so this is for uh, this statement that is monthly trend the second we have to find out is the regional analysis by state okay so for that i will again run this entire query to see uh, what is the state so you have a state uh, abbreviations are only there that is address state okay so again we have to uh, you know uh, work on these same measures only so we'll just modify this query so i will just remove this because we want don't want with respect to date but we want it with respect to address state so that is nothing but address state okay and i will copy this so we'll i will just modify this query only Comp copy this and instead of grouping by this we will group it by address state and we will also order it by address state now when i run this query you can see with respect to address state we are we are going to or we are seeing here the applications okay and if you want to let's say you want to see uh, what is the total funded amount maximum total funded amount for which particular state we are giving so you can just copy this sum of uh, loan amount and you can add it over here and we will name it as in descending order and i will run this query and you can see for the total funded amount this is maximum that is 78 million is given to california okay with respect to that if you want to see the total loan application maximum so you have to just take this total loan application that is count of id and you have to put it over here and when i run this query you can see california is only the state which has uh, the total loan application as maximum second is new york then fl texas okay so all these states are there so with respect to that if you want to sort your columns you can sort and you can take the insights from here again you have to save this query all right so this is your second the third one we have to find out is with respect to term analysis okay so loan term and we have to analyze it in a donut chart but here if i run this query again you can see the term is nothing but we have in field over here called as term so that is 36 60 months and all those things so we will again you know make modifications in this query only because the measures are same the same matrix we have to measure just with respect to different dimensions so term okay so we want to analyze with the term and we have to group it by term control v and order by also i will add it by term itself and i will remove the descending and i will run this query so you can see for 36 months this is the total loan application for 60 it is this the funded amount for 36 months the funded or the total received again back amount for the 36 months so in this way we are analyzing with respect to different months or here or for different terms okay so this was your third the second with it with with respect to employee length okay so when i run this again and you can see the employee length is nothing but this column okay so the name is what employee length that is emp underscore length <laughs> sorry okay and i will just copy this control c and i will paste it over here okay and now i will run this query so as soon as you run this query you can see the total number of uh, employee the different employees so less than one year one year 10 plus years two years three years four years so with respect to all these uh, these are nothing but these uh, these are the employees or these are the customers of that bank who are working as an employee and who are working as an employee in in their professional experience who are having experience more than three years four years and with respect to their working experience or working organizational experience uh, the bank is deciding to give them applications or not so with respect to that they have decided and with respect to that the total applications which are been received for each and every employee length it has been seen over here okay 
so if you want to see uh, which for which particular employee length the total applications are given so we can see we are taken we'll just control c here and we'll paste it over here and we will see it in the descending order so when i run this query you can see for 10 plus years 8000 more than uh, 8000 applications are given similarly second one is uh, less than one year then two year three year four year then again one year right so in this way they are funding their amount or they are giving uh, the loans to the people with respect to their employee loan all right then we have to find out with respect to purpose for what purpose they are buying that uh, employee or that particular loan okay so i will run again this query over here okay and the purpose you can see this is the purpose column which we have so that is nothing but we are going to write your purpose okay and i will just copy this and here i will paste it and when i run this query you can see uh, with respect to and we have also uh, sorted it with count of id in descending order so debt consideration is nothing but this is the purpose why they have bought the loan and there are 18000 applications are there for that particular loan second is credit card some of them have taken for improvement of their home some of them are taking for business car loan wedding loan for medical for moving house loans are there some vacation purpose educational purpose renewable energy so there are different purpose why the people are buying the loans and with respect to that which is the maximum purpose or which how many loan applications are maximum given for which kind of purpose okay and with respect to that what is the total funded amount for that particular purpose and how much is the amount received back from that particular purpose okay so in this way bank analyze all these particular things over here all right then next we have to find out with respect to home ownership so i will run again this and we have a home ownership over here so for that i will write a home ownership over here <laughs> sorry okay so home ownership okay and i will copy this and we have to group it by again by home ownership and when i run this query you can see with respect to home ownership for rent home ownership means the people who are living on rent they are buying the maximum loan applications then the people who who are uh, you know uh, living as in mortgage okay they are using this type uh, they have taken this amount of applications okay so with respect to this uh, we can you know analyze the things also all right so with respect to home ownership how the uh, customers are taking the loans how the bank is giving them the loan and you can slice and dice the data with respect to different measures over here all right so in this way we have uh, you know shown all the metrics for the second dashboard we have analyzed everything and the for last one this is the grid view okay so grid view is nothing but if i run this query this is nothing but the entire grid view all right so you you don't have to you know uh, go inside and you know uh, you fire some sql queries for grid view it is nothing but a grid view where we are going to export it into sql format so it is not required to do this so this was all about the sql part okay so you will say you will be saying that we have applied different uh, uh, filters on our dashboard with respect to the filtering if i if i see for execute this and if you can see this is the offer all the days okay but we have applied some filters on our data so let's say i have applied a filter called grade okay and i want to see for a grade so what i will do i will add a where condition over here where grade okay where grade is equal to what e so i want to see for a grade okay so for a grade uh, how many are the home ownership uh, applications so where i run these queries you can see there are different values available same in uh, our dashboard also we are going to apply some filters if i show you my dashboard here so you can see and if i go into or you second dashboard so i have applied different filters over here like for good loan bad loan with respect to grade with respect to state okay the same you can apply the different applications over here so for grade also if you want to see for alaska okay so if you want to see for address state as is equal to if i see it for uh, if you want to see for california that is nothing but ca and when i run this application so these are the total applications for ca when for grade a and for state ca okay so in this way you can you know apply different filters and you can find the results okay so this is the way you should fire the sql queries we have just taken the overall but you should apply some different filters and with respect to that you you should check the data whether it is working or not
ओके सो फिल्टर्स आर ऑल्सो वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट एस क्यूएल नाउ वी विल गो हेड एंड सी हाउ टू डू द थिंग्स इन पावर बी हाउ टू बिल्ड द डैशबोर्ड इन पावर बी एंड देन वी विल वैलिडेट आवर रिजल्ट विथ वॉट वी हैव गॉट इन आवर एस क्यूएल क्वेरीज बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड दिस डॉक्यूमेंट सो दिस डॉक्यूमेंट यू हैव टू क्रिएट you have to store all the results over here so that you can cross check with your power bi dashboards right so in this way we have seen our sql part okay so now next we will move to our part 2 of this particular project data analysis portfolio project in financial domain so here we are going to design our dashboard in power bi so i have taken a new power bi file which you can see in front of your screen now next what we have to do is the first step we have to you know connect our data to over this particular power bi file so now before doing that many people do not have ms sql server installed in their system or they have fired all the sql queries in uh, my sql or in postgres sql so for those people you can connect to that but if you don't have any actual database you can directly connect to your csv file okay so first i will show you how to connect to csv file so here you can see a text file is there in get data and from here i will browse this file and you can just open and it will be connected okay and then you can perform all the operations which i am doing right now right so or if you have already installed the server we are going to use ms sql server we have already fired all the queries in that and if you have that then how to connect your power bi to ms sql server so when you come here when you land on land on this particular page you already have an option here called import the data from sql server if you are not finding this option you can click on get from another source and here you will have an option called server i will just type here server then you will get a different operations here like you have a sql server database so i will just click on sql server database i will double click over here and it will ask you the server name okay so now this is very important i will just go to my here and here you can see the server name is different for our different users okay so if it is in your system you have to use your own server name don't use the server name which i am using okay so for me the server name is when i connected to this particular server that is when i opened this particular ms sql server i already told you the server name they will ask you the server name okay or they will mention their server name of your system so for me the server name is this that is here you can see my server name is appearing that is swapnajit slash sql 2022 okay so i will be using the same server name for me it will be different for you always remember okay so i will write here swapnajit okay swapnajit slash sql 2022 so this is my server name so the database name so database name is this is the database name which we have created that is bank loan db so same database name i will apply here So I will write a bank loan DB over here. Okay, and you just have to click on OK. So make sure that your server name is correct and your database. It is optional, but we will be using it. And I will just click on OK. So it will take some time to connect to our server. And after it is connected, you will get in this dialog box that you have connected to this particular server with that particular domain. And this this is the bank loan data. which is available in our server that is in this particular database we have this particular table so i will just click on this particular table and the data will be loaded over here so this is some preview of the data which here you can see and i will just click on load so as soon as i load the data all the data will be loaded into my power bi okay and then we will see how many data has been uh, we are how much data is been taken from that particular server So before moving ahead into our project I would like to introduce you to my website and this is available on topmit where I give different offerings so in that one is you can reach out to me personally for one to one call for you know career guidance in data analyst or you can reach out to me for interview preparation tips in both power bi and tableau and also you can reach out to me for one on one mentorship or mock interview as well and mock interview both in power bi and tableau uh, I will be able to help you in all of this and in this particular mock interview i will give you i will take your interview as, as well and i will give you the feedback also what you should improve and how was your interview with me getting or not and there is op available options for recording as well if you want to record uh, you can select the options and you can just uh, have an option where you will get the recording of this particular video as well all right and also i will provide some digital material as well here you can see uh, the power bi material is also available 
which includes all these topics which are which you can see in front of your screen and all these particular topics uh, those are already created by me and designed by myself okay and all these notes are very much helpful let's say you have a, a power bi interview two or three days later and you want to do a revision of all whatever you have learned so these are the uh, go to notes and ppts are available where you can just go through all of them interview questions are available of all rounds like technical non technical any non technical managerial rounds client rounds right and uh, also in technical level 1 level 2 scenario based questions are also available and i will also provide you the power bi two to three projects also right with all the dashboard files i will provide which you can add in your resume right uh, the raw material i will share with you the problem statement of that particular project as well right similarly you you can find the same for tableau for sql as well and all this consolidated is also available in data analyst complete material where you will uh, you will get to see all the data analyst tools which are available and in this also i will be providing you with all the handwritten notes printed uh, pdf notes will be also available Uh, with all the important topics and in this the main important thing is i will provide you the road map okay and the road map is designed with respect to current 2024 year with the latest technical uh, we can say techniques are added in that uh, and the uh, we can say what you should what topics you should learn that has been added and for all those topics i have mentioned the links of different courses of youtube videos of udemy which are best for that particular topic so you don't have to search and go around and look for those particular videos and which one to see what to see so these are hand picked by myself so it will it will not uh, we can see it will not waste your time in searching those you just have to click and you can just start learning those particular topics and with this also projects are also included uh, in each tool so you can just click you can see you can read everything whatever you need over here and then uh, if you find it helpful you can go ahead and purchase it and you can see so last 3 months only i have started and you can see more bookings i have got and you know so i was the top rated in data uh, for uh, we can say 2023 year all right so similarly uh, right now 30% offer is going on only on data analyst material and it is only valid up to 15th march 2024 okay and you can also read my different feedbacks also you can read about me as well over here getting not so at the end i will add the link in the description box of this particular video you can go ahead and visit if you find it helpful uh, you can just go ahead and buy it and also you can just click here and all the description is mentioned whatever is available in this material it is mentioned and if you have any questions you can reach out to me at this particular whatsapp number all right so let's move ahead with our video so here you can click on table view and here you can see this is actually the table which we have just imported in our power bi and at the top at the bottom you can see here it is mentioning that how many rows are there so you can see 38576 rows are there and which are the correct amount of rows which we have imported over here so now next thing before doing your analyzing always check the quality of the data okay so that is nothing but if your data is in correct structured format if there are any errors if there are any null values are there if there are null values then if it is okay to keep those null values or if you have to go ahead and check with your data engineer check with your client that uh, if this null value should be changed or if this values should be you know uh, deleted actually or that complete row should be deleted so to check that add uh, quality of our data first what you can do is you can check here only here itself you can check you can go in each and every filter okay so here you can see if there are null values or not but this will this is a long process actually so to do it quickly what we can do is here i will drop down this and i will just click on the data which we have i will go to home tab and here you have an option called transform data so as soon as i hit this transform button it will take me to a new window which is a power query editor which is inbuilt in power bi so as soon as i click this it is opening with me a new window which is called as a power query editor you can see over here okay and now here we will check our quality of the data so to check the quality of the data what i will do i will go in view button and here you can say column quality or you can see, you can if you see i will just check on column quality and here you can see whether this particular data is having any error or there are empty rows or anything is there so if you can see an id column you can see it is valid 100% there are a 0% error and empty 0% 
so we can come to know that or we will know that the, yeah this particular column is very much good for us we can move ahead so address is also 100 percent application type is 100 percent employee length is 100 percent now if you see at employee title valid are 94 percent and there are six percent of empty rows are there you can see there are null values are there over here okay but as i told you initially also when i walked you through the data if there are any null values that is okay for us because in employee title uh, not all the employees are working right because uh, the, for the people who we are giving the loan not all the people are working and in some cases they are not providing their uh, providing their employee title also so if it is a null that is okay because uh, we have also asked our client if it is okay yes they have they have said that yeah null is okay we can analyze the data with null values only all right then we will check for grade then it is also okay then home ownership this is also okay then you can see everywhere uh, you can check each and every column if it is 100 percent or not if it is 100 percent then we can uh, we can we can conclude that yeah the data is in good quality there are no empty rows there are no null values there are no blank values okay now when i uncheck this and when i click on column distribution so it will give me a distribution here that you can see these are or whatever power query the data which we are showing here uh, power query will only show your first thousand rows here you can see column profiling based on thousand rows only so first thousand rows only it will show us so for 1000 rows you can see id have 1000 unique values it means that there are uh, we can say 1000 unique values are there for first thousand rows and out of that all are we can say each row will having a unique value so we can conclude that this is a primary key for our data and all other they might have duplicate values why because uh, each uh, or each particular home ownership because the values are repeated over here because those are dimensions okay and they can have the repeated value all right so not to worry on that so here also if we can see member id the member id is nothing but that particular member id it is also having unique values right so it is also we can consider it is a uh, we can say unique value we cannot consider it as a primary key but we can consider it as a unique key okay because it take, can take null values all right so in this way also we can check the column distribution how the column is distributed and all those things so you can also check column profile actually it is not required to check column profile uh, the column quality and column distribution is important you can check both at once also right so in this way we are checking our data and in power query itself uh, there are provisions where we can do some quality check and if there are some errors we can uh, do some data cleaning also right some basic level high level of data cleaning is also done by using m codes and all those things but as our data is in good quality we do not require any checks over here all right so now we will go in home tab here and we have an option here called close and apply so as soon as i hit close and apply it will bring me back to my power query or sorry the power bi desktop all right so now uh, here we have to start building our uh, whatever visuals our dashboards with respect to our problem statement so if you go and see our problem statement here so before moving ahead to our next part in this particular project i would like you to introduce you to my website so with request of many subscribers and many candidates they ask me to uh, connect one-on-one -on -one, create your own resources to data analyst i have created this website where i offer different services to you so like interview preparation mock interviews career guidance in data analyst okay how to do your resume so no cre profiles if you want one on one mentorship and some digital materials are also available like power bi material okay so this is an entire material in which you also get some two projects also two entire projects is included in this which are not uploaded on youtube okay these are uh, apart or these are uh, different from youtube okay and the entire material from where you can learn all the topics of interviews dax data modeling all the theoretical notes are available over there so this is a uh, projects are also there you can see this is a power bi project this is a entire uh, we can say tableau project is available then we have data analyst complete material okay so if i show you the data analyst complete material it is a comprehensive material with all the tools you can see and what are the offerings what i will provide in this material it is also mentioned so each and everything for tableau to power bi uh, everything is mentioned in this particular material okay so you can also see and you know uh, if you are interested you can buy this and then i have also uh, some sql materials as well and these are the feedbacks uh, you know which i received from the people who are purchasing you can also read everything and then and then you can make sure if you are interested you can go ahead and purchase 
so now let's move ahead to our next part of the video so again we will see the problem statement we have to do some key performance indicators or we have to build some key performance indicators and in that you can see we have to find out some month to date uh, values or month on month values so now to find the month to date values we know that or if you don't know it is important that we have to work on time intelligence functions okay so month to date dates mtd dates ytd total mtd total ytd so these dax functions are called as time intelligence functions and to perform any time intelligence functions we have to create a date table okay it is recommended by power bi to create a date table okay we have to create a new table in this and this particular date table because i have already told you while firing the sql queries we have taken into account to find out the month to date values is issue date whatever we are going to find out we are going to find out everything on issue date so what we will be doing we will be doing or we will be creating a date table we also called it as a calendar table and we will be we will be taking all the values from issue date itself so now to create the date table we have an option called as new tables i will just create a new table over here and i will name it as date table okay so this will be my date table so i will just increase the size so it will be visible for you so this is my date table and here i will be writing a dax function for this so you can create a date table by two functions uh, one is calendar and second is calendar auto you can also create a date table in power query itself but it is easier to create it in using dax and we will be using a calendar function so this is the calendar function so it is taking two arguments so first it is asking what should be the start date and second it should be as it is asking what should be the end date of that particular uh, we can say a date call so first we will be taking uh, start date we will be taking as a minimum okay we will be taking minimum of issue date okay so issue date is nothing but the date from the bank loan data so this is our start date so what is the whatever is the minimum date in our uh, issue date column in our bank loan data that will be minimum or it will be our start date and max of uh, end date will be what max function it is nothing but max of issue date okay so this is our uh, we can say date column so i will just close this end bracket also and as i will hit enter so as soon as i hit enter you can see i have received and date over here and with respect to that when i scroll it down so 12 uh, we can say 12th december 2021 is the last date which we have in our issue date and first is the this date so it is taking all the dates between minimum and maximum so whatever is the minimum and maximum in between that all the dates are been taken and so in our data whether we have that particular date value or not it is taking all the dates okay so and this each each row of this particular date column will be unique okay each row will be having an unique value all right so it means that this is again a primary key of this table date is the primary key of this table because each row is having unique date each row you, no row will be repeated with the same date all right so now here what we will do we will uh, uh, from this month we will extract year month also we have to extract month so like 1 1 2021 is nothing but january month so we will create a column for this so we have an option here called new column so i will just hit a new column and i will name it as month name or we will name it as month only and to derive uh, that we have to write a format function the value is nothing but date table okay so the date table this is the date table date okay the same value this is the name of the table that is the date table which we have created you can see here one second i'll just you can see that this is the date table which we have created all right and with respect to that this is our uh, date comma the format what should be the format i will write a format four times m four times m means what it will give us the name of the full month and i will hit enter okay as soon as i hit enter you can see the month is retrieved from that second is february third is march likewise all right so this is the table which we have created but if you can see there is no relation yet between this table and the uh, main database which we have okay so when i click on here data model wing so this is the data modeling uh, we can say page where we do some star schemas snowflake schemas where we connect our table to uh, multiple tables where we create some relationships data modelings and all those things all right so here you can see right now this table is independent this table is independent which we right now created but we have to create a relationship in between these two 
so we know that this date column is uh, having and each row is having a different we can say date we can say primary key so here what we will do we will connect this to issue date because this is derived from issue date and all our calculation are based on issue date only so i will drag this and i will place it on issue date over here so as soon as i do this you can see a relationship is been created a cardinality has been created and you can see it is been one to many relationship why one to many because here the date each row is having a single uh, what we can see value on each row and here on each row for that particular issue date there may be multiple values i will show you in the data so here you can see in bank data and when i show you the issue date you can see issue date is here the values are repeating you can see 9 october might be repeating you can see 9 november is repeating 10 february 10 february 10 february it is repeating multiple times on each row so that is the reason it is here are many values are there on each rows but here is only one so we called it as one to many relationship that is here is a primary key here is a foreign key okay so in this way we have created a relationship between our bank loan data and with our date table data okay and now what we have to do we have to start building our visuals so i will go into report view and here we are going to design our visual so before designing what we have to do i will give different uh, colors we have used if i show our dashboard so you can see different color combinations are used here so same color combination we will be using here you can use your own color combination if you don't like this so for here what we will be using the background color so i will just click on this outside and here you have an option called format your report page then i will go to canvas background and i will apply the color for me and i will click on more colors so here i will be using my own color code and the color code which i will be using for this will be hashtag i will be using the color code let me just find the color code which i will be using one second it will be hashtag zero three times zero okay you have to press three times zero three times zero eight three d okay so this is the color code which i am going to enter okay but you can see the color has been not applied over here because the transparency is 100 percent so i will just reduce the transparency to zero percent so you can see the color has been applied over here so this will be my canvas background then i will go to canvas setting and here you can see the alignment is top so instead of stop i will click on middle so as soon as i click on middle the page will be at the center of this particular entire canvas okay and then i will just click here and now what we have to do we will bring different elements okay so you can see on this dashboard i will bring this top element this side element uh, we will build our you know uh, first uh, uh, what we can see uh, the structure of our report first so i will go in insert here and from here you can add a shape from here so we have this shape i will just take this shape and we'll add this shape so i'll just take it from end to end okay and i will take it at this entire end and what i will do select this shape go to general and in properties for me the height of this particular will be 55 okay so this is our title actually so i will take it as 55 i will select this then go to style and turn off the borders okay so we are turning off the borders and the color for this will be complete black okay so this is entire black color which we are going to use then i will just control c and control v i will take it a bit down okay and i will increase i will decrease this size a bit for our left hand side canvas so this our left hand side canvas i will just increase the size to the end and i will increase this select this go to general go to properties and for me the width of this should be 192 i will take the width of this will be 192 for me so this is our structure which we have created next i will add the title of our project so i will just go to text box okay so I'll just reduce this and i'll reduce this okay and the text will be bank loan report okay i will add a pipe operator over here and first we are finding it for summary dashboard okay then select this entire okay select this entire thing and uh, it should be what i will choose the font as geo bold okay and the font size for me will be 20 and i will just reduce this reduce this okay and now i will just select this okay select this particular entirely from outside then i will go to effects and i will turn off the background then i will again select this 
and I will uh, choose my color as white okay. and I will press to and I will select this particular summary only and for me the color will be this blue that is themed color right. and I will just drag it and place it in at the center okay so this is nothing but our uh, what we can say the name of our dashboard okay that is nothing but summary and first first it will be summary so i will just select this again and we will try to change the color to this perfect all right so now this is our summary and now next what we will do uh, we will try to create our first kpi so if you go to our problem statement we have to find out the total loan applications okay so now total loan applications is nothing but uh, it is it is what the total loan application is nothing but count of id okay so for that what i will do i will create a dax major so i will just right click over here and we uh, you have an option called major new major so i will just click on new major and i will increase the size a bit so you can see it and here i will name it as total loan applications okay and it is nothing but count of id so i will just take count of id okay that is count of bank loan data id and i will just hit enter so as soon as i hit enter you can see a new uh, field has been created here called as total loan application okay that is nothing but major so you can see at uh, the front of this there is a symbol of calculator so if you can see if it is a calculator symbol is there then it is been created in the power bi or we have created that major manually in power bi it is not the field which comes from power bi or which sorry which comes from the database itself it has been created in that particular data in power bi okay so now we will take a card from here you can see uh, if you go to visualizations and go in build visual there is an option called as card so as soon as i click on card the card window has been opened here okay control z so i will just select this and i will reduce it and i will bring it over here okay then go to add your visuals select this card and we have to add here so i will take our loan applications and i will place it over here so these are our our total loan applications okay now for this i will select this and go to format visual then i will go to call out value and for me uh, the call out value which i will take over here will be 29 okay i will take it as 29 and i will take it as bold and uh, we don't want category label so this label we don't want so i will just turn off the label over here and now next i will just reduce this size a bit i'll bring it down over here and now i will just remove the background from here okay i'll just reduce this also so i will go in general okay go in general or go in uh, just go in general go in effects okay and you have no background on just turn this off so you can see background has been turned off go to visual again and from here the call out value color we will be choosing as white color okay and you can see we have mentioned in our this dashboard up to two decimal points so to do it up to two decimal points you can see uh, the decimal places is available you just have to increase what one so you can increase the decimal point by over here right so now what we have to do is we have to create a placeholder for this okay so that is for total applications we have to create a, a kpi background for here so i will go uh, into insert I will go to shapes and I will insert this particular rectangle. Okay. And now select this. Okay. Select this. Go to style and the color which I will be using for this particular for loan applications. I am using a different color. So for this, I will be using a color code as hashtag AD5129. Okay. So this will be the color code which I will be using then select this go to general and properties so we will define our height and size of this particular thing so for this i will be choosing uh, the width or the height i will be choosing as 117 and the width for this i will be taking as 195 okay so this will be my height and width and i will take it and i will try to place it over here okay then i will go again again i will select the shape then I go to shape and here in style uh, the transparency of this color okay for this transparency i will take a 15 percent of transparency and i don't want to show any border for this i will just turn off the board okay so this is the kpi card which we are going to show or use to show our applications okay right now what we will do i will take this and i will try to place it over here okay 
and I will just end to end I will show it here and you can see it is it has been gone back side of this shape so I will just select this shape go to format and send backward okay click on send backward and you can see it has been coming forward the value has came forward now next what we will do we have to mention the title of our uh, this particular kpi so i will go in text box select this text box okay reduce the size okay bring it at the top okay and i will name it as total loan applications okay so for first kpi it will take time for other we will just copy and paste it okay so select this kpi card go in effects turn off the background okay select this entire reduce this somewhat okay then uh, we will choose uh, what we can say the uh, size for this as 10.5 and we will use a sergio ui bold okay and the color we will be using is this okay and we just enter it all right and uh, we will pick it and we will try to place it over here all right so this is our total loan applications we will reduce this as well and we will take it a bit up all right okay perfect so let's check with this dashboard okay it looks good so 38.6k and the total loan applications all right now next what we have to show is the month to date and month on month so with respect to our uh, this also we have to find out month to date applications and month on month applications so now to find out the month to date applications here it is important that we have to make use of time intelligence function and for that we have already created a date table over here so what we will do in our data i will right click over here and i will create a new measure and i will name it as month to date loan applications okay and i will make use of a calculate function so i will make use of calculate function it is asking me what should be the expression so for expression I'm going to make use of a date time intelligence function over here called as total MTD. Okay. So total MTD is nothing but it is an expression which is used to evaluate uh, we can say month wise uh, how my, what are the load online applications. Okay. So it is asking us what should be the expression of this total MTD. What we have to find out. So we have to find out total loan applications and we have already created a field for it that is total loan application. We will be taking same. So we have to find out the total loan applications for here okay i will close the bracket okay so instead of closing i will just use the second form second argument that is date so for by which date we have to find out so we are going to use the date field date so that is we have created a date table and we are going to make use of that date. and i will close the bracket and i will close the bracket one more for the calculate field okay and i will hit enter you can see a field has been created over here all right so what i will do I will just copy this or instead of that I will take a new card over here just click on card I will reduce this and I will take this month to date loan application and I will try to show you can see these are the total month to date applications and we will just quickly format this okay so for here I will go to format visual in call out value uh, I will be showing it as a Sergio UI semi bold so we will be changing the font here to semi bold and the form font will be 12 okay and the display units should be what in thousands and we are going to show it up to one decimal point all right then we are going to use uh, we can see off white color for this we will use this color okay and we will go in general we will go in effects and we will turn off the effects all right again go to visual and we will turn off this category level we don't want to show this so turn it off then again go in general and turn on the title we have to show the title and the title we will mention as month to date okay and the color of this title which you are going to show will is this okay we will show this color as of title and we will center this alignment should be center okay and then i will just try to reduce this okay then take this and we will try to place it over here all right then select this and i will just drag it up a bit and go to this and go to general in title we will change it to sergio semi bold and we will change it to 10 okay we will reduce the title a bit okay and we will take it up right 
all right so these are the month to date applications that are 4.3k next if so we are finding the values over here but we have to check with our sql query document if the values are correct or not so we have a query document over here i will just take it up so you can see the total applications were 38576 so we are getting the same value that is 38000 so it will be the same value so the current loan applications are 4.3k that was four uh, we have just converted it to thousand so we are getting or we are able to match our values with this so with respect to that here also we are getting the same values right so uh, not to worry on that so we are showing the values which uh with, with respect to our applications we are showing the correct value over here all right now next thing what we will do we have to show here the uh, month on month right we have to show here month on month change also so now the month on month change formula is nothing but uh, the month on month is calculated by a formula called month to date value minus previous month to date value divided by the previous month to date value so we have calculated the month to date applications but here again we have to calculate the previous month to date applications also so how to do that so for that we will just right click over here and i will create one more measure and i will name it as previous month to date loan applications okay and here what we will be using i will be using a calculate function again so i will use a calculate function the expression is nothing but what we have to find out we have to find it for total loan applications okay total loan applications we have it is already a calculated field all right comma then what will be the filter condition so we are going to use uh, make use of one more uh, what you can say time intelligence function here called dates mtd okay so we are going to make use of dates mtd it returns the set of date in month up to current date okay so whatever date we are specifying with respect to that only we are going to get our uh, what we can say with respect to that date only we are going to get our photo loan applications okay so here we will use one more date field called as date add okay so we are we have to subtract the one month from here okay so we have to subtract from which date so it is asking us which date we have to subtract it from so it is we have to subtract it from this particular the table which we have created from date table comma what should be the number of intervals so we have to go one month back so we will name it as minus one comma and you have to uh, take minus one uh, you have to uh, you know go one month back so you have to select your month okay if you want to go one year back then you have to select year over there so i will just close the bracket close the bracket one more time and close the bracket one more time so three times you have to close the bracket and i will hit enter so you can see these are the previous month to date applications okay now what we have to calculate we have to find out month on month applications so for that i will write one more calculation over here i will create a new measure and i will name it as month month on month loan application okay and the formula which i already told you i will add a bracket that is month to date loan applications minus previous month to date loan applications close the bracket total divided by previous month to date loan applications okay all right so this is the formula which we are going to use and i will just hit enter all right and now we will bring it into visualization so what i will do this only i will just copy Control c Control v and i will copy this only here select this just close this we don't want to show previous month to date so we want to show month on month so take this and place it over here you can see 0.03k we are seeing so we will change that so select this go to here go to call out value here you can see display unit is thousand we don't want thousand we will choose it as at o okay and here you can see it is 0 0.1 only but we have to show it in percentage so for that what i will do i will select this particular field okay select this particular field which we have just created go to format or you can, here you can see we have an options here to change our uh, percentage so you have to just click on this percentage symbol as soon as you click you can see it has been converted to percentage all right and next again select this go here format your visual then i go to general and in title we have to change this instead of month to date it is month on month okay and you can change the color of this too uh, if you want you can change it i will just change it to let's say this okay now we will take this and we'll try to place it over here perfect okay so these are our what 
uh, the loan applications month to date and previous month to date the same which we have created here all right so uh, now next what we have to create is we have to create the same for the total funded amount all right so now what we will do i will just take uh, the same thing so what we will do here uh, instead of doing all these things repetitively again and again so i will select each and every element here so i will just select the base first so this is the base okay so instead of that first i will just select this element then second element press control and then select okay then this then this and then select the base okay then right click over here and group it okay so you can see whenever i'm moving this it will move as a group okay it will not move as an individual okay so we are grouping this now what i will do i will select this i will just control c and control v so entire group has been duplicated over here and i will place it over here right so in this way uh, we have we are saving our time but the background of this will be different so i will just select the background okay so at outside only you have to click once twice and you can see the background has been selected okay so first if you select just click once enter will be selected if you click twice then the background will be selected and make sure you click on outside don't click inside anywhere just at outside so that background will be selected go to style and here we will change the color okay so for here we will use a different color code for this will be hashtag zero two three five six three so this will be the color code which we'll be using okay and the same 15 percent okay so if i just double click here the style and the 15 percent all right so this will be uh the one thing which we have created now next what we have to create it as our problem statement we have to find out the total funded amount so for this i will create one more calculation new measure and i will name it as total funded amount and the total funded amount is nothing but we have to take sum of the loan amount so it is nothing but sum of the loan amount this is nothing but the loan amount close this and enter okay so now you can see you have to select you have to change this kpi so select this and select twice okay two times you have to click you can see this kpi has been selected then i will just show you again select once entire will be selected as a group click twice then that particular element will be selected and here also you can see this is the loan application we don't want to show loan application we have to show the total funded amount so just take it and put it over here so you can see this is the total funded amount all right but we have to show it in the form of dollars so select this okay select this entire thing and here you can see there is an option called here a dollar symbol just click on this you can see a dollar symbol will be coming over here now next we have to find out the month to date total applications to find out month to date you can see there is an option we have already created this that is month to date uh, loan applications we will copy the same formula and we will use this okay so i'll just copy the formula control c i will right click and i will click on new measure okay and i will paste that formula and instead of month to date loan application this is what month to date funded amount okay and we have to find out the same formula will be there just we have to change the total application instead of total application here it will be total funded amount because we have to find it for total funded amount i will just hit okay okay and now we have to change it over here so just select this and select twice okay so this has been selected so instead of month to date loan application i will close this we have to show your month to date funded amount so this is the funded amount but what we have to do we have to change it to different things so i will just select this go to here go to call out value and instead of thousand we will select here millions okay so it will be showing it in millions but we have to show a dollar symbol over here so select this and select from here dollar symbol so you can see we have got this in the form of dollar the same way we have to find out the month on month but to find out the month on month we have to first find out the previous month to date uh what if we can say loan applications we have already calculated the previous month to date loan application i will copy the same formula control c right click create new measure paste that formula and instead of loan application it is what month to date total funded amount okay and instead of total loan application here we have to write total funded amount okay we have to select total fund all other formula will remain same i will just hit enter and just close this okay you can see the field has been created then we have to find out month on month applications so again same formula not month on month application month on month 
uh, fund data model. So, so I will just copy this, right click new major, paste this over here, and instead of month on month loan application, it is month on month total funded amount. And we have to change it entirely here. So instead of month to date loan application, it will be month to date funded amount here also previous month to date funded amount and here also previous month to date funded amount okay and just hit enter all right close this and then select select twice and so the month on month is selected close this and we have to select the month on month funded amount just take it over here so you can see it is one so select this and we have to convert it into percentage so as soon as you do you can see the percentage has been converted the same you can see here also we are doing the same thing now we have to validate this with our query result you can see the month total funded amount is how much 435 million you can see 435.8 so 0.75 will be converted to 8 and the total funded month to date is 53.9 that is nothing but 54 million so you can see it is 54 million so in this way we have to validate our results also with whatever we are building over here understand so we will change the name also this is nothing but total funded amount okay so if you are building one if if you build one the others uh, building of other kpis is very much easy and very much simple all right so now we have to do it for other kpis also okay so again what we will do control c and control v i will again copy and paste this and we'll bring or we'll drag it over here okay so don't worry about the spaces in between that we will adjust that later okay so now next is what uh, we have found out the total funded amount we have to find out total amount that is received and we know total amount received is nothing but sum of the total amount okay so for that i will just right click over here and i will create a new measure over here that is total amount received okay see the funded amount is nothing but the amount which bank disburses to that particular customer so bank is giving a loan to that particular fellow so this is the entire in that particular year this is the total number of funded amount and the total amount is received with it is nothing but the amount which that particular customer after taking the loan is repaying to the bank in the form of installments or in the form of emis monthly emis or yearly emis or he's giving some lump sum amounts and that he have to pay with interest rate okay so always remember the total funded amount uh, or we can say the total amount which the bank is getting back will be always greater than total funded amount because with respect to that only the banks are making profits right so this i've already explained you while we were firing the sql queries all right so the total amount received we have to find out and it is uh, again uh, it is nothing but the sum of total payment okay so in in our data the total payment is nothing but the total amount received i will just hit enter okay then select one select twice so this kpi will be selected then close this and we will be taking as total amount received okay so it is 473 million it is always greater than the funded amount then and then the bank will make the profits from there okay so now again select this entire and we will just add a dollar symbol over here all right so in this way we are showing this so i will just activate my pen so that my cursor you can see where is my cursor okay so now this in this way we have found our uh, this kpi next we have to find out the month to date application so now to find out the month to date applications we have uh, already month to date funded amount we will use the same formula control c again right click new major i will paste it over here and instead of funded amount it is what month to date or we can say month to date total amount received okay and instead of a formula will be same instead of total funded amount we have to take here total amount received okay and all other things will be same i will just hit enter and we will change our kpi just select this and select twice and instead of amount received we have to show here total as a funded instead of funded we have to take total amount received so this is here just take it over here so this is what uh, the total amount received oops i think we we have to change the month to date right so i will just take month to date i will just close this and we have to take the month to date uh, 
total amount received okay so you can see this is the month to date total amount received so instead of this uh, we have to add the dollar symbol so just select this and in the you can have to go in major tools and here you can just click on dollar symbol so you can see uh, the dollar or the currency has been added next we have to find out month on month but before finding month on month we have to find out previous month to date uh, total amount received so we have an option called uh, we have already used this formula for funded amount we will copy this right click and click on new measure okay so once you write the formula the same formulas will be used again and again and instead of total funded amount it will be total amount received okay and we have to go one month back so we have used the date cmtd and date add function over here i have already explained you how this particular calculation works i just click on hit okay okay so we have to change the name it is month to date total received amount just hit ok and you can see the calculation has been created then we have to find out the month on month so i'll just copy this right click create a new measure and it is what i'll just paste it and this is what total amount received okay so we have to change this to month to date total amount received this to previous month to date total amount received same here total amount received okay just hit enter and now we will change this so just select this twice we will change this and we will bring here the month on month total amount received okay so we have to change it to percentage so for that select this and change this to percentage and you can see the value has been changed so now again validate the, with this with our sql query so the total amount received here is 473 million which is same month to date is what 58.07 which is 58.1 so all the values which we are showing here are perfectly correct and perfectly fine okay now again we have to find out the uh, next with respect to problem statement is average interest rate so i'll just copy this control c control v and i'll paste it over here okay now we have to modify our calculations again so average interest rate is nothing but we have to take average of our interest rate so for that i will write a calculation new measure and i will name it as average interest rate okay and we will name or we have to take average of our interest rate so that is average of interest rate the field which we have in our data and hit enter so average interest rate is nothing but the loan is given by a bank but they have always charge some extra amount with respect to the interest rate okay while repaying the loan amount okay so the interest rate uh, what will is the overall average interest rate which they are charging we have to find out that because this is a summary dashboard all right so once we build all the kpis i will show you uh, how to read the insights from that all right so first we will build the kpis and i will just select this twice okay then close this and we have to bring here the average interest rate here it is bring it over here so you can see it is not in percentage format so just select this click on percentage so you can see 12.0 is the percentage all right so if you if you see with respect to our um, uh, SQL data also 12.0 is the percentage amount which is the exact match all right now next we have to find out the month to date average uh, interest rate how much is the month to date interest rate all right for that uh, we have a formula over here for funded amount we will just copy this formula right click oops not new column we have to, we have to right click and we have to create a new measure okay paste this and this is month to date average interest rate okay and instead of total funded amount we have to take here average interest rate okay and just hit okay then just select this entire uh, two times close this and we have to take month to date average interest rate over here so instead of million we have to change this so go to format visual go to call out value and here instead of millions just choose atto okay and after choosing at all select this average interest rate 
go to major values and from your select percentage you can see it has been converted to percentage now we have to find out month on month but for that first we have to find out the previous month okay? so i will just click on the other calculations which we have already created copy this calculation right click new major paste it over here and instead of this we will write it as average interest rate okay and here instead of total funded amount we have to find it for average interest rate okay and just hit ok and then we will find out the month on month so just copy this right click new measure paste it over here and this is what month on month average interest rate and we have to change it over here so this is month to date average interest rate similarly here previous month to date average interest rate divided by previous month to date average interest rate hit ok then select this then we will uh, we have to change this close this and we have to check month on month average interest rate select this ok just select this calculation and convert it into percentage you can see 3.5 percentage right and we will change this is nothing but uh, it should be named as average interest rate so it is average interest rate so here as well it is nothing but total amount received okay and the last kpi which is remaining is average dti it is nothing but debt to income ratio from that it is decided whether the loan should be given to that fellow or not and the debt to income ratio actually it is a us term mostly used in us so based on that uh, average dti must be somewhere between 30 to 35 percent uh, it is should should be not very high it should be not very less okay so average should be that much so if it is in around 35 or 20 or 30 to 35 it is considered that that particular fellow will repay our amount whichever the loan he is taking all right so now i'll just copy this control c and control v and i will just place it over here all right now next uh what i will do i will just select this and i will just bring it to right somewhat all right now we have to find out the average dti okay, so first i will just change the name to dti okay and uh, average dti we already have a field over here so i'll just right click and i will create a new measure and i will name it as average dti and it is nothing but average of dti field which we have okay i will close this and hit enter then select this twice close this and we have to take the average dti over here just place it over here so it is 0.1 select this and change it to percentage so automatically you can see the value has been changing now we have to find out the month to date to find out month to date select the month to date average rate copy right click new measure and paste it over here so month to date average dti we have to find out okay and instead of average interest rate we'll just take it as average dti just hit okay select this month to date close this and take the average dti over here so it is in point one select this average dti and click here on percentage all right so it has been converted to percentage now we have to find out month on month same procedure first we have to find previous month to date control c right click new major control v and here it is nothing but average dti okay here also it is average dti okay then we have to find out month on month okay so just copy right click new major paste it over here and here we will change it so first it is average dti okay so we'll change this to month to date average dti next is previous month to date average dti and here also previous month to date average dti just hit enter okay then just click on month on month over here uncheck this and we will take the average dti okay then select this 
and click on just percentage you can see these are the month on month increase if you can see with respect to this the values are exactly matching check with your query document the average dti is 13.3 which is correct the month to date is 13.6 6 that is nothing but 13.7 which is also perfectly correct so in this way we have uh, created our major kpis now you can see for you there may be not a perfectly gap in between them so it may be up and down here and there somewhere so what you have to do to make a equal spacing in between all of this i will just select this one two three four five entire things you have to select go to format and go to align and here you have an option called distribute horizontally just click on that once you click on that each of them will be taking equal space in between them okay if you want you you can uh, you know uh, align center align left or distribute vertically also but here i will recommend here to distribute horizontally so that all of them are in same line and they will have a same equal gap in between those right so this is a good practice so that uh, the dashboard should be appealing good appealing it should be good it should be looking good also not only you have to make uh, you know just show the charts over there right so visualization is also important imagination making it look good is also important okay so now you will ask me why i have made it this in the orange color because you know the total loan application are important right what how many total loan applications are there and it is a requirement that you should mention this should be highlighted separately that how much are the total loan application in that entire year how much are month to date and with respect to last month how many of how many of them are increasing each month because if the total loan applications will come then and then uh, money will come funded funding will be given amount will be received and the profits will be gained all right so in this way we have determined the kpi and i will give you a quick insight of this you can see here these are the total loan applications the total funded amount which i told you again and again i am telling you again that this is the funded amount is nothing but the amount which is disbursed to the customer which is given to the customer as a loan okay so this is the total amount which is given as a loan and this is overall figure of that entire year we can say a header kpi or summary kpi we can say at higher level and for current month okay so latest month 54 million has been given and with respect to last month 13 percent more amount has been given okay so it means that it is performing good performance is good everything is positive means what um, if the uh, percentage is in positive then we can say uh, the business is performing good all right same amount received is nothing but whichever amount which we are giving to our customer in the form of loans we take them from we take it back from them right and we take it back in the form of emis and installments and we charge them some interest okay so with respect to some interest we take it back so always this amount will be should be greater than the funded amount okay so that this is the margin in between this is nothing but the profits where they are making okay so month to date is 58 million where they are getting back and this is with respect to last month 15 percent increases there which is good then this is the average interest rate every bank loan or every loan which we take there is some interest rate charged so this is the 12 percent is the average interest rate charged for all the loans and this is the month to date and this is the month to month increase the average dti is nothing but which gives us the financial health of that particular customer so before giving any loan to that customer we check the financial health from here all right so i hope you have understood and if you have came at this point of video so you are doing amazing and i hope you are understanding everything and so quickly i will take five few seconds of you you can quickly go ahead and you know like the uh, this particular video subscribe the channel which will help me to create such good amount of videos and now we will move next with respect to next kpi so we will uh, go ahead and uh, build our next kpis for our summary dashboard and when we see to our uh, actually ppt so when we see we have to build our good versus loan uh, bad loan kpis and good loan in this we have to select or use this majors and for bad loan we have to find out this majors all right and so good loan i have already told you what are the good loans so good loan is nothing but we are going to analyze it with respect to loan status okay so good loan are those good uh, loans uh, after giving the loan to those persons or those customers bank is gaining some profit back okay so let's say a bank is giving some loan to that particular customer if he is pay, repaying that particular re, uh, loan with respect to given installments and he is fully paying his loan back then that loans are called as good loans where bad loans are nothing but uh, bad loans are something 
where the customers are not paying their money back they are not paying their installments and where the banks uh, you know are getting loss or they are they are facing some losses here all right so those are called as bad loans so for uh, or we can say we are going to derive the good loan and bad loans based on the loan status so we have a field called your loan status so based on this field we are going to create a group and with that group we are going to you know uh, create a good loan and bad loan a new field which we are going to create so i will just right click over here and we will click on new group over here okay so we'll create a new group over here and uh, uh, we can say the fully paid and current loan okay whichever whoever falls in this particular category or the loan status falls uh, in that category it is called as a good loan and charged off are nothing but those loans are not a good loan those are not repaying those customers are not repaying back the loan and those are called bad loans so first i will just select this two press control select this two and group it and we'll name this group double click here we'll name it as good loan okay so this is a good loan for us and this is one just create a group of it and and we will name it as bad loan so this is a good loan and this is bad loan so just click on okay and you can see a new field has been created i will just right click over here and i will just edit the groups okay and we will name this group as good versus bad loan <laughs> sorry and good versus bad loan and i will just click on okay so you can see a new field has been created over here that is good versus bad loan and that we will be using to determine our next kpis okay so before that i will just create a press folder for our kpi so i will just go in insert so i'll just go in insert and here we i will add and shape and i will be using a rounded rectangle okay so i'll reduce the size somewhat over here and whatever the size or the color code which we have used here same color code we are using just i will just uh, select this outer and i will just click on home format painter and i will just click on here so you can see same color we are getting over here i will just take this go to format go to style and here you can say uh, we are having a uh, shape here we will change this to five okay all right so five is okay then i will just bring it over here okay i will just try to place it nice go in general in properties and here i will uh, you know i will take uh, the height as 260 and i will take the width for this as 522 okay so this is for my good loan i will just create one more instance where we will be using it for bad loan okay so this holder is for my bad loan and this is for my good loan all right now next we have to create a pie chart so i will just show you our dashboard you can see we have to create a donut chart or a pie chart here we will mention the good loan percentage same bad loan and here the bad loan percentage so just let's let's create us uh, first the uh, donut chart so i will just select a donut chart from here and i will take it here and we want a good versus bad loan so i will just take a legend put it here in the legend and now what uh, we have to take here is uh, we have to find out or we have to take the total uh, uh, what we can see here we have to find out the total loan applications we have to take so i will just take a total loan applications from here we have already created that field so just find okay so this is the total loan applications sorry so i will add it uh, here in the total loan applications and then select this visual over here turn off the legend turn off the detail level so speak. okay then go to general turn off the title go in effects turn off the background as well okay and we will try to reduce it and go to general again and in properties we will take the height of this as 230 and i will name the width for this for me will be 250 okay so this will be my good versus bad loan all right now i'll just bring it a bit right so you can see it has been uh so i will just select this and i will take it to right now we will change the colors and all this uh, we can see the size of the donut so go to slices and for good loan i will choose uh, the color from here as yellow color okay or i will just choose this okay and for bad loan i will choose this color okay, that is a bit uh, black i can see or oh, some shades of the black and spacings I will just reduce the spacing here to 80 percent 
okay so this will be the spacing which we'll be using now uh, what we will do we will find out at the center we will find out our uh, loan percentage okay that is nothing but good loan percentage all right so for that what i will do we have a percentage or we have here already a field created that is a kpi holder so i'll just double click over here we those this kpi holder will be selected Control c Control v okay so it has been selected and i will bring it over here and in this only we will place our kpi so first we have to create a calculation with respect to good loan so i will just right click and create a new measure and i will name it as good loan percentage it's good loan percentage okay and we will use a formula here okay so good loan percentage how to find out good loan percentage so uh, with respect to good loan uh, percentage we have to find out the applications which are for good loan divided by the total applications right so we have to find out the percentage it is nothing but the total number of application as a good loan divided by the total applications of entire data set so what we are going to see so we will use a bracket over first and then we will use a calculate function so this is a calculate function so then it is asking we have to find out what okay so that is nothing but total loan applications so we have to find out with respect to the total loan applications we have it here total loan applications comma so what should be the filter condition so we have to find it for good loan so we will take good versus bad loan and it should be what equal to it should be equal to what good loan okay it is equal to good loan all right then i will just close the bracket close the bracket outside and i will entirely divide it by what total applications that is total loan applications so this is what the calculate functions and we have to filter it only for good loan so i have chosen here good versus bad loan as good loan and divided by total entire applications whatever we have and i will just hit ok over here okay so you can see uh, we cannot find a good loan so uh, let's see first here right click it groups so we have an option here called good loan so let's see okay so we have to mention here double noted not single we have to find double noted here because it doesn't take single quotes we have to use a double quotes and now i'll just click on okay so you can see calculation is valid now select this okay and instead of average rate we want good loan percentage over here okay so you can see these are the good loan percentage but we have to convert it into percentage format so select this good loan and here click on percentage so you can see it will be converted to 86 point okay so i will just bring it to the center of here all right just reduce this all right and we will go to format and it call out value uh, okay so you can see it has been gone back side of this shape first so we'll bring it forward so select the shape first go to format and send backward just click two three times send backward uh, then five to six times you can click and you can see it has been coming forward okay so just okay, just this also we have to send it to backward so select pie chart and click on send backward one sec so we'll just take it aside i will take it out again just bring it here and i will just select this and we will do formattings first go to here choose the call out value as uh, uh, we will choose it at let's say we, we are going to take it as 28 uh, we'll take it as 28 and we will choose the color as this okay and then i will place it away hold it so in this way uh, we will be doing this pie chart and now uh, we have found out the total loan good loan application percentage so i will just select the title also so i'll just double click here Control c Control v and we will bring it and we will try to place it over here okay and this is what good loan okay just bring it a bit down and we will take the font as 12 or left okay perfect so good loan issue nice and clean 
all right now next what we have to do is uh, we have to find out the other kpis that is good loan applications good loan funded amount good loan total amount received so fund, first we will find out the good loan application so i will just again right click click on new major and we will name it as good loan applications okay same we will use a calculate function again okay in calculate function we want to find out expression now here we have to find out how many are the total applications so we will take a total applications again first so total loan applications comma again we have to apply the good versus loan filters because we just have to find it for good loan so good loan is equal to what this should be equal to good loan close this close this enter and press enter okay you can see we have created the next we have to find out good load funded amount okay then i will right click again so i will just copy this calculation again control c and i will right click here major okay and i will paste it and this is what good what it should be good loan funded amount so it should be good loan funded amount okay and instead of total application we have to choose here total funded amount okay this is total funded amount and it is for good loan so just click on okay all right so we have to create good loan uh, we can say total received so just right click click on new measure then this is what good loan funded amount and here we have to write here as total amount received okay so it should be total amount received just click on okay so we have to rename the measure first good loan received amount and then click on okay. so we have created all the three measures now we have to bring it into visualization so here we are going to make use of a a new card visual so where we can take multiple kpis in one single card and this is a newly created or this has been updated in power bi so those who are not using an updated version of power bi I request you to update so it, it can be visible for you if it is still not visible you have to go in file then you have to go in options and settings go in options and in preview here in preview features you have an option called new card visual so you just have to check this okay click on okay if it's still not visible you have to just save this then you have to close and reopen your power bi right so now we will take a new card visual so i've taken new card visual over here and we have to take good loan applications here we have to take funded amount and good loan amount received so now we have to do some formatting so select this go here and in going layout and in, in layout we have to take choose this as vertical okay make it as vertical try to adjust it over here and we are we are going to choose the space between card as six all right then go to general go to effects and turn off the background okay we don't want any background to be displayed then go back again to the visual okay and now here in call out value uh we are we are going to choose our different colors over here so uh the font size which we'll be using is 2022 bold okay we are going to use a bold file size then uh okay then we will go to our labels for labels uh, we'll be taking it as off white okay and it will be sage ui semi bold okay so this is the thing we are going to use okay i'll just select this and i will reduce the size first okay so in this way we are going to use this and now next what i will do just select this again go to our uh, cards okay in cards in fields just turn off we don't want any fill don't want any border okay go back to call out value here we will choose it as white color not white we are going to use as yellow color because we are going to match the formattings over here then just close the cards just open the card again go to accent bar we are going to turn on the accent bar and the accent bar we are going to take it is this one new and we are going to take the size as five okay so uh, these are these are our good loan applications good loan funded amount and good loan received amount but here you can see we have to give some uh, 
currency over here right so we will see the good loan funded amount choose the currency over here got it and the value or we can say decimal point as one okay then for good loan received amount also select this not percentage sorry we have to choose it at per dollar symbol and here as one okay one second we have to do it as one all right so you can see this is a good loan funded amount uh, we can say kpi so just take it right a bit all right so let's see if it is looking good yep and this i will take to left this is okay all right so this is our good loan uh we can say issued the same we have to do it for bad loans okay so we will do the same things again and once it is done for good loan bad loan is easy so just control c control we will be using the same key chart over here all right then next i will just copy this also control c control v all right so now we'll just select this chart go in here and we will just change the color of the slices so instead of good loan we will choose this uh, for good loan now and for bad loan what we will do i will choose this or uh, you can go ahead and choose this also okay, this looks good all right so this is for uh good bad loan actually so this is for bad loan okay this is the bad loan information and we have to build the percentage also so i'll just take this a bit down and i will just copy this control c control v i will take it out and i will just place it again over here take it and place it over the between okay and now we have to find out the percentage so this is the good loan percentage calculation which we already have here so just copy the same control c and right click and create a new measure okay paste it over here and instead of good loan percentage i will name it as bad loan so wherever you see good loan we just have to change it to bad loan so it is good loan so we have to find it for bad loan so i will just click on bad loan just hit enter okay then we don't want to see good loan we have to see it for bad loan just take it over here and select this and we have to choose and convert it into percentage so it is 13.8 percent go over here and it fallout value we will change the color to this okay so we are going to try to match the colors with our uh, whatever values we are having all right i'll just try to bring it to center of it now we have to find out all other these three measures so i will just control c and control v same we'll use here okay and uh, next what we have to find out over here is first i'll just take this to right all right now what we will have to do here uh, we have to find out for bad loan okay so now for bad loan we have to find out first a uh, loan application so these are the good loan applications so what i will do i will just select this i will copy it Control c i will create a new kpi sorry new measure paste it over here and instead of this these are bad loan applications here instead of good versus bad we have to change the filter to bad okay because we have to find everything for bad loan now i will just click on okay all right same for funded amount okay select the funded amount select this entire thing Control c right click then we will click on new measure paste it and instead of good we have to change it to bad okay same thing we will do it for amount received also so change it to bad loan okay just check it all right so now here what we will do here are good loans are uh, good loan are added i will just check the bad loans also I will take bad loans, all the three are taken, and I will remove these good loans. Okay, so now you can see these are the bad loan applications actually. So I will just select this and we will change the currency over here quickly. So we are going to take this currency and we are going to see up to one decimal point. Similarly, for this also, we are going to see for one decimal points. All right, 
so in this way we have chosen this and next uh, we i will choose the bad loan applications and i will just see up to one decimal point here also for good loan i will see it up to one decimal point okay so uh, we will change some colors also for here for call out value i will change the color to this and the card that is accent bar i will change to color to this okay perfect and i will just select this bar again go here go to layout all right all right all other things are good so in this way we have found out uh, you know the good loan and bad loan percentage and by looking at these figures you can see the good loan issued or the funded amount which has been given is 370 million and out of which the received amount is 435 million so you can see so this is good for bank because they are making some profits here right they have you know disbursed or given or lended 370 million amount but they are getting back 47 435 million so which is good amount and out of total we can say the total application 86 percent of application are for good loans which is a good amount of application but still 13 percent are for bad loans and we can say out of total we can say five more than 5000 applications are for bad loan and out of bad loan 65 million we uh, amount we are giving and only in return you are getting only 37 million so here they are in loss getting or not so this should be not the case all right so that's the reason what we have to do here is uh you know uh, we have to increase the good loan applications okay in this way uh we have you know uh calculated this kpi as well all right and one more thing that we have to compare this result with our sql query also so if i show you the document over here so these are the good loans you can see 86.17 uh, which is exactly equal to 86.2 and these are the good loan application that is 33.2 this is the good loan funded amount that is 370 million which is the same then received amount is 435 million which is same similarly for bad loan if you see it is 13.82 the percentage is 13.8 the same uh, only just we are showing it for up to one decimal point these are the bad loan application 5.3k these are uh, the bad loan funded amount is 65.5 million the same amount we are getting here and the bad loan received amount is 37.2 million which is equal to here as well so in this way we are comparing and we are getting the same results we don't have to worry if we are getting the same results we have to worry if we are getting some different results right so in this way we are calculating this and next we will move ahead and find out uh, the kps for loan issue okay or we can see by, by loan stickers all right okay so we will move ahead to our next build and according to problem statement we have to create a loan status grade view okay and with respect to these loan status we have to show different metrics over here like total loan application total funded amount total amount received month to date funded amount and month to date average uh, or we can say month to date amount received and interest rate and the debt to income ratio that is dti okay so now to show that what we will do i will go in visualizations and i will take a table from here okay so i will just increase the size of this table okay so bus first before the table we will add a background over here so i will just take this background and i will control c and control v i will just paste it over here okay and i will reduce the size okay just reduce the size and i will increase it sideways all right now i will try and place it over here okay so makes i make a room for it in this particular box and we will leave some space at top for our title okay now next what we have to do here is we have to add a loan status but you can see this has been gone this shape is front and the chart has given one back side of that shape so select this particular shape go to format and click on send to backward okay and once you do that this shape is in in front of us so it will be visible for us right so now what we will do first we have to add a loan status i will find a loan status for us okay so so here we can find our loan status we have taken the loan status we'll add it into columns next we have to add the amounts all the amounts first we will add <coughs> first we'll add total loan applications okay or you can just tick the boxes that is also okay for us then the total funded amount total amount received then we want month to date funded amount month to date total amount received back then we have to find out the average interest rate and average dti okay so these are the values we want to show in 
in this particular grid view all right now we will do some uh, you know quick uh, changes in here i will just select this again go here in format visuals go to general go to effects and turn off the background okay we don't want to show any background for this then go to visuals and go to style and in style i will take the alternating rows okay so once i choose the alternating rows you can see uh, the headers and the totals have been given a different colors and the background colors and the fonts as well all right now next i uh, will just turn off this then in grid view uh, i will add a horizontal grid view uh, or we can say a line over here and for this the width i will take it as three okay i will take three as a width over here vertical grid lines also we'll add it over here and we will take a black color for this a bit black okay then uh borders we don't want to add then we will go in values and for values we will take it as 12 okay we will take 12 and uh we will take it as ago semi bold okay and you can see the background color we will have to change i will change the background color to this okay uh, we will try to match it over this color so first i will take the color code of this whatever color code we have go to style from here i will choose the color code Control c okay and now select our chart then go here for the background color click on more colors and paste it over here okay similarly for alternative background color also we'll choose the same color and paste it okay and now the text color we have to change text color i will take the text color as this and the alternating text color also we will choose is that this so you can see the text color has been given over here so next for column headers also I will increase the size to 11 okay we will take the size at 11 and next uh, the background color we will take a bit of this color or we will take this color okay this is good all right then uh, we will go ahead and we will choose our totals also for total we will name it as grand total okay instead of total we will name it as grand total grand total okay perfect so here also the background we will take it as this okay so it will be matching with our headers and this particular things all right now quickly we will do some formattings more over here so it's the horizontal grid lines in between so we will change the color of that again so we can see this is the color grid and we'll try to change it to this or not this okay okay let's find some other color okay this looks fine and we will change it three only not four <laughs> similarly for vertical guidelines also i will change our color to this okay so it will be distinguished perfect now what we will do uh, we will quickly adjust our you know uh, the things in this particular uh, so i will just increase this so and the total loan application the total amount the total amount received month to date amount funded the month to date amount received again okay then this is our average interest rate and the average dti perfect we'll just increase the size a bit so you can see we have checked this so now we will also center this particular that is we will take it to center or we will take it to at right end that is nothing but the header alignment we will change so column headers and we will take to right end okay so this is the total amount received or we can take it at middle also doesn't matter so values also you have to take it to middle so we will just see how it looks okay so it doesn't allow values to be at center no problem so this is fine okay and so just let's take this and take it a bit down so that we can add a title for this okay so i will just select this Control c Control v and I will take it over here and I will name it as loan status okay and at the left alignment okay so with respect to that perfect so now here you can see the loan status you can change the name of this so it will be looking uh, uniform and with proper languages so I will just select this chart not this the select the have to select the chart select this chart again then go here and click on double click on loan status and i will name it as loan status 
okay perfect so in this way we have converted you can see the currency is also there for all of these uh, we have a interest rate and all of these things right so in this way we have created our you know summary dashboard but yet we are still left to add a filters over here so quickly what we will do we will go ahead and add the filters over here so for that i will take a slicer from here so i will just click on slicer so this is the slicer the first slicer which we will be adding over here is uh, we will add it for a uh, state okay let's find the state or you can see this is the address state i will just take it and put it over here next select the slicer and we will just quickly format go in slicer settings and we want it as drop down list okay then uh, it should be and we have to show the all button also then we don't want the slicer header the values which we are using is will be you semi bold and we will reduce it to 10 okay or 9 is fine and i will just reduce the size reduce in sideways and we will try to place it nice and clean okay, take it over here at the bottom here and we will change this uh you know size of it later wherever we want to place it all right okay, select this i will add it to center and next we have to give or we have to do some formattings for this so again select it go to slicer settings go to effects and in background if you turn off uh, we have to give the background actually so i will just give this color or we can give this also sorry i guess this is fine all right mm -hmm. and then again we will go to visual and in slicer values uh, we will change it to white color okay and similarly uh, the border or we can see the background of this slicer you can see when we choose this everything is white so we will change the background also to this color so you can see background will be also uh, with that color and it will be easy for us to select it correct so in this way we have selected our slicer and we will give the header name of the slicer so i will just select the header name from here itself or from here i will just select this Control c Control v and i will try to place it over here and this is nothing but state okay so quickly we will do some formattings on the left side i will take the state reduce this reduce in top okay and select this and we will take the font as 9 okay and we will make it as sejo ui okay that is fine bold is fine will change it to color as off white all right and we will try to increase it to 10 okay so this is our state filter so let's just see quickly okay so we'll just try to increase one more font we'll take it as 11 okay so this looks good so this is our state filter we will add one more filter over here so i will just control c and control v i will add a one more filter over here and okay here it is good and instead of uh, you know address state i will add a grade over here okay so we will take a grade okay so i will just remove this and i will add a grade okay and uh for that we will just take this uh next thing copy this control c control v and we'll name it as grade all right and one more filter we will take control c control v i will add it over here okay copy this and we will bring it over here okay and maybe we will name it as purpose okay and the same thing <laughs> sorry we will take a purpose from here select this particular slicer go here remove this and we will select the purpose all right perfect
all right so in this way we have added the filters as well other components over here or the whatever the menu card and all those things we will add it later so you can see now we have added all the filters over here so with respect to that what we have to do we have to just adjust the filter okay the position so that they are equivalent to each other right the spacing is equivalent between them so that it will be looking nice and you know unique for all the dashboards so uh, the other components on this dashboard we will add it later when we build the other dashboards okay so you can see this is the summary dashboard if i show you in the full screen okay so this is the summary dashboard i will name this page as summary okay and which is which we can see is an overall dashboard or which gives an overall idea of the business and you know from this at higher level the insights can be generated and with respect to different uh, you know uh, filters we can check this so if you want to see for alaska state you can see you can check it for alaska you can check it for you know different other like california states also similarly if you want to see for any grade so if you want to see for c grade if you want to see for f grade how grade wise the loans are given how the grade wise other things are given right so uh, with respect to that also you can check different values so purpose so for car loan uh, or we can say for different car loan so let's say for car loan how is the business performing right so with respect to that if you want to see for house loan okay so you can see how in house loan 15.6 percent of loan applications are bad applications right and we can see 4.8 million amount is funded 5.2 which is received similarly if you want to see for so let's say for medical purpose okay so for medical purpose you can see 5.5 million is funded okay similarly if you want to see for debt consolidation so for debt consolidation 232 million is given so similarly with respect to all of these you can add more filters if you want and you can look at the data with different angles you can slice and dice the data and with respect to that many business decisions will be taken okay so in this way we have created our first dashboard now we have to go ahead and we have to you know create our second dashboard that is an overview dashboard and always remember to cross check where your all these values whichever we have generated with the query document which we have created because we have already cross checked uh, or we have created the result with respect to queries and it is always uh, only good or it is recommended to check the result with whatever we have already created so that uh, you are not creating any uh, you know wrong values over here and with respect to that it will be a good quality of dashboard and the quality or we can say it will be a final that we can give this dashboard to our client to our you know stakeholders and where they can use this and they can take some decisions from that all right okay now so we will go ahead and create our overview dashboard we have already at the problem statement now what i will do i will just right click over here so i will just right click over here and i will click on duplicate the page okay so the same page we will be using just we will be duplicating the page and i will name it as overview okay so here also we will change our dashboard name to overview okay and next what we will do we will delete all the elements which are present over here so all the elements we have to delete so i will just select this entire thing and we can delete this similarly we will select this entire thing and we can delete this on on this i will just delete this this and this particular because we want the shape behind here uh, which will be our placeholder for the remaining charts okay <laughs> So I will just click on visualization, click on data, then select this particular, go to general, go to properties. And for me, the height of this will be 235. Okay. And the width I will take as 405. Okay. So now in this, we will create our first chart. All right. So let's go to our problem statement first. So in problem statement here, you can see we have to create a monthly trends by issue date. All right so now to create a monthly trend by issue date what we have to do is first we have to take a line chart okay so i will take a line chart first right so this is our line chart i will create it over here and here you can see we have to show these three metrics at a time that is loan application funded amount and total amount received so now how to do that first i will take uh we have to take what we have to do we have to do show it with respect to month okay so now month we are going to take it from date table which we have already created initially while data modeling so i will just scroll it down and here you can see we have a date table and from here i will take the month so i will take a month and i will place it on x-axis okay so now next what i will do i will take a total loan applications from here and i will put it on y-axis and you can see a chart has been created over here all right but it is not allowing us to you know um, change this chart or change its axis like the 
uh, you can see the wax is the total loan application should be properly again with a filter it should be changing with respect to you know uh like i can say total loan applications or i can say that uh, it should be changing to total funded amount whatever it is all right so now to do that what we have to do is we have to create a field parameter okay so now to create a field parameter to make it more dynamic okay so i will go in modeling page and uh, here you have an option called field parameter or a new parameter so i will just click on this and i will click on fields okay so then it is asking what should be the name of parameter so i will name it as select major okay so which major we want to select so that you know the values will be changing with respect to that all right now it is asking us which fields you are going to use so we are going to use from bank data and i will just scroll down <coughs> and i will select which field we are going to use so we are we are going to use total amount received total funded amount and total application because these are the three majors you can see if i show you the problem statement we these are the three majors which for which we have to analyze our data correct so select this three and just click on create okay so once you create this it will take some time and you can see a select a major slicer has been automatically created over here okay so what i will do i will just select this slicer then i will go to format your visual and in slicer settings i will click here as drop down and in selection we will select it as multi single select it should be a single select because we should it should not allow us to select multiple majors right then what we will do i will just click here and i will click on format printer and i will just click here so you can see the format printer has been selected but again the single select has been gone so i will just turn this on as a single select and now we will just try to place it properly over here just take it down over here now we are will change so now place it over here and for all of these what i will do i will just take all of this a bit down okay so we'll just do the adjustment quickly so that this will be set properly so just take it a bit down similarly for this as well okay and we will take this also and we will just copy this okay just copy this control c control v and i will bring it over here and i will name it as select select major <coughs> all right so from here you are going to select major but when i change this you can see nothing is changing yet okay so here also whenever i'm changing nothing is changing so with respect to the major which we are trying to create here it is not changing the chart with respect to that major right so now to make it or to allow us to change with respect to this chart what we have to do is we have to make use of this particular major or the field map painter which we have created for building this actual chart okay so for that what we can do is i will just select this chart then go to our build visual and here instead of taking this loan application i will just delete select this go down and you can see one more select parameter or select major column has been created or a table has been created you just have to open this and you can see there is a value at the bottom called as select major so just take this and put it over here okay in the secondary axis not in secondary axis you have to put it in on y axis all right so as soon as you do this and now when i am changing this particular things you can see the values are changing with respect to that you can see the values are changing with respect to that even the title is also changing you can notice the title so whenever i'm changing it to total loan applications you can see total loan applications by month so this is the beauty of field parameters in power bi where you can go and you know analyze different majors in a single chart and with respect to that it will it will save our multiple creation of multiple dashboard and in one single dashboard only we can analyze different majors and we can take insights from there all right now we will go ahead and do some formattings on our chart so i will just select this particular chart then go to format your visual and we don't want to show any axis over here we will just remove completely y axis we don't want to show just remove it then click on drop down and remove the title as well similarly on y axis we have to show the months over here but we will just remove the title from here all right now next what we have to do is i will go in general in effects i will turn off the background okay then go to visual again and we will turn on the labels over here okay so i will just turn on the labels 
okay we want to show the labels then for labels uh, uh for we have to go in labels then go in values over here okay and here so okay so we have to take a actually we had to take a uh, we can say area chart for this but we have taken a line chart so just select this particular chart and just change it to line uh, area chart so automatically it is changing to area chart here then go again back over here and go to data labels and here we have to change the values color okay so from color we will take this as off white color okay and uh, we will change this to semi bold okay and we will change it back okay now next thing you might have noticed here that all these columns or the months are sorting from december that is from december to january or from maximum to minimum but we have to sort it from january february in this way we have to sort it until december right with respect to whatever months we have so for that if you go in sort axis and if you try to sort it by month then it is sorting by with respect to the alphabetical order similarly if i try to sort it by in ascending order again it is uh, you know sorting with respect to alphabetical order all right so now to change this so let's say i have selected in descending order okay select make sure the month is selected and when i do in descending order again it is sorting from uh this particular things okay so now how to change this all right so before doing that i will just change the title and change this particular you know whatever we have the names of the month over here so to do that i will select the chart go to general go to title and in title here you can see instead of this i will choose it as the blue color then uh, i will choose the font as semi bold okay and i will choose the font size as 12 all right next we go to visual then just go to uh what i can say the x-axis okay here we have a x-axis all right or x-axis you can see the values are there here also we will choose as this color okay so now next what we will do we have to or we have to you know you can see the months are not uh the, we don't have that much amount of space to show your months so first i will just adjust my chart over here quickly Okay. and when i reduce this you can see we don't have enough space to you know it is not able to uh accommodate whatever space it have in this particular month so we will reduce this so we'll just take first three initials of each and every month so for that what we have to do we have to change it in our table itself and also we have to sort it with respect to from january to december so for that we have to make some changes in our table so for that i will go in table view okay in table view i will just drop down this and you can see we have created a date table over here okay and in date table we have created a month field so i will just select this month field and instead of taking full name of the month i will just take three times okay so i will just take three times m and when i click enter you can see it is taking only first three initials of that particular month and i have to create one more column over here i will just create one more column and i will name it as month number okay so i will name it as month number so from here we will be uh, you know extracting the month number so for that the dax is nothing but month and we have to just uh, from where you have to expect it is nothing from the date table and the date column so i will just select this date column and i will just hit enter so you can see it has been extracting the january as one month february as two and march as three so in this way we are going to make use of this particular column in our view so go back again to our view and the first thing you might have noticed that the values are now showing correctly right we can see on x-axis and they are looking very much proper uh, which was not looking initially very good because it was the space was not available for us to show the full months all right now we have to sort our axis so for that what i will do i will select this month column go to column tools and here we have an option called sort by so sort by column i will click here and i will sort it by month so as soon as i do you can see it is sorting it from december to january but we want it in ascending address so go in more options go in sort axis make sure month is selected and not uh, you don't have to select ascending we have to go and select the descending so we don't have to select descending we have to select ascending and now you can see it has been sorting from january to december and we can see the trend has been going up and up okay so the total loan applications are going up and up in every month so which is good for the bank which is good for the business as well right so if you change this uh, uh, measure so if you want to see for total amount received you can see we can see the total amount received as well how it is the total amount received from each month we can also see from uh, total funded amount as well from here all right and the same again we have to cross check with our query document okay so when i go and see 
uh, for the uh, we can see the month you can see if you want to see for the total funded amount for january it is 25 million which is correct for uh, february also it is again 25 million if you take the round figure all right then it is 29 million then again it is 29 or 30 million we can see the round figure which we are showing so that is fine so last you can see it is 54 million which is which is like 53.9 is nothing but 54 million similarly you can change uh, check it for total loan applications as well so in january you can see it was 2.3 which is correct in february also it was 2.3 because 2.27 is nothing but 2.3 then next is what march it was 2.6 which is correct over here so in this way we have to analyze and we have also created one parameter over here or we call it as a feed parameter which is allowing us to toggle in between the majors with respect to that we are getting the dynamic uh, what we can say title as well as and we are getting the values with respect to that also all right so this type of interview question is asked for you in the interview how will you sort your months or we can say month from january to december because that is not available directly in power bi we have to make some provisions for us to do that particular things right so that is something custom and with respect to that we have done this all right so this was about total loan applications by month and if insight is generated from here so business is doing good because the trend is going up and every month all right so in this way we have analyzed the total loan applications by month okay so now we will go ahead and build our second chart and the second chart as per our problem statement is uh, regional analysis by state so we have to find out state wise how many are the total loan application total funded amount and all those things okay so we'll do that quickly so for that i will just take this same shape okay the background shape i can say i'll just select the shape control c control v and i will add it over here okay so nice and clean and i will just go in format go in general go in properties and for me i will take the width of this as 360 okay and here we will try to adjust our uh, field map i can say okay so now i will take a field map from here so this is our field map we'll just reduce the size so in this field map first we have to add the location okay and the location is nothing but our address state so i will take the and i will add the location over here that is an address state then next we have to add a legend over here okay so for that legend uh i will just uh instead of field map we will go into uh yeah okay field map is okay then we will just take the major and i will add it to the legend over here all right so you can see it is not been populating yet so i will just take this and i will convert it to shape map okay all right so we have to take a shape map over here yeah. so make sure you you take the shape map to for this and now next uh we will do some formattings over here so quickly what we will do uh, when i change the loan application you can see the values are changing okay so values are not changing with respect to that yet so i will just delete this map again and we will create the shape map again so for here and i will just take a address state and i will add it to location and i will take the major and i will add it to color saturation okay so with respect to color saturation we will do this and now when i am changing it to total load applications you can see the values are changing with respect to that all right so now we will do some quickly formattings on this so i will just take this go to format visuals go to general and go to effects and i will turn off the effects then go to title and in title uh, we have to change this okay so quickly what we will do instead of this we are going to take semi bold well and the color will be this blue color all right so i will just try to adjust it over here okay and reduce the size in this way perfect now what we will do uh, i will just select this and you can see the address state over here so instead of address state i just want state over here so i will just select this and in here we have added it into this particular location card over here i will just double click over here and i will name it as state okay and you can see automatically the values will be changing so one second name it as state and press enter so you can see the value has been changed or the title has been changed to state then select this map and we will change the colors for us then go to map settings over here and in map settings or in coin fill colors and we will change the minimum should be uh, we will take for minimum it should be this color okay and whenever we have a maximum value it should be this color so i will just uh, you can see the values have been changing with respect to that and if you want uh, one more color you can add one more colors over here so the minimum value uh, what should be the color for minimum value and what should be the maximum this is add to taken 
so we will not change that actually and you can see with respect to different uh, majors you, you can see the different values over here and with respect to that you can do some different majors also all right so these are the total loan applications you can see when you hover over your mouse you can see the total loan applications for california are 6894 and you can check it in query document which we have created and here you can see for california it is 6894 similarly if you want to check it for ak that is alaska it is 78 similarly here also it is 78 all right so in this way you can check it for different majors make sure uh, with respect to our query document we are getting the same values over here and then uh, you know we can make, make uh, you know uh, we can uh, ensure that the values are showing correct so that we are maintaining the quality of our dashboard right so now next with our problem statement we have to find out the loan term analysis all right and we have to create a donut chart for that so first i will take a background for us i just select this control c control v and we will try to place our background over first here that is the placeholder for our chart and i will reduce the size likewise okay and now we are going to place our donut chart over here so i will take a donut chart and we have to take a term analysis so for that i will just take term over here i will add it into legends and the dynamic measure that is the select measure we will add it into values all right so this is by term so if you want to change the name of this so i will just double click here and we will name it as term okay in ps capital okay press enter so you can see value has been changed now i will just select this okay i will just select this over here i will go to format printer and i will click on this you can see the values are changing with respect to that all right so and i will just place it over here all right and we will try to place in this particular placeholder for us okay now select this and we will do some formattings for us now in legends uh, i will just select the legend and we will take the legend at top center okay we'll add a legend at top center and in text color we will change the color to this and we will change the font to 8 okay so this is term then uh, we will just uh, go ahead and turn off the title because it is nothing but it is the term itself and we'll turn off this turn off this okay then we will go in details okay and in values we will change it to this color okay and we will change it to semi bold all right and we will change it to 8 as a font all right now next we will go ahead and change our uh, we can say slices okay in slices we will change this and for slices for 36 month i will choose this as the color okay and for 60 month i will choose this as the color okay i will change it to this perfect okay you can choose any color combinations whichever you want so you can see out of this particular total loan applications the maximum loan applications are given for you know for 36 months and the minimum are for like 26 percent are only for the, this particular and you can change with our query document also so with respect to query document you can see for 36 months it is 28,000 applications are there so you can see for 36 months there are 28,000 to 37 applications and for this it is uh, 10,339 so we are getting the same value here if you want to check it for total funded amount i will just check this and for total funded amount you can check it over here it is almost around 16 million or okay or we can say it is uh, yeah 162 million something you can see you can you are getting the same value here also and here it is 2733 million which is the same value right so here you can see the uh, ages or the labels are getting cutting out so i will just select this we'll increase the size on right wise okay and we will go to the visual and go to slices and here we will change the spacing as well so we will increase the spacing for this a bit we will make it to 70 okay and next thing we are going to change the rotation for this so we'll just make it as 20 degree okay so we are making it 20 degrees so that you know the values of this particular details are visible clearly those are not getting cutting out due to the space which we have in our dashboard okay this was our third chart and the next requirement is with respect to employee length we have to create a bar chart okay so i will just take a placeholder from here itself Control c Control v and i will add it over here at the bottom okay and we will increase the size in vertical like this okay 
perfect so now so this is our placeholder for our bar chart so for that i will go in visualization i will take a bar chart from here and here we have to show the total funded that is nothing but by employee length so we have employee length over here i will add it into uh let's say yeah y-axis i will add it into y-axis and the dynamic measure we will take and we will add it into x-axis so you can see it has been taken over here so what i will do i will just select this chart i will click on format painter and i will click this okay so the formattings will be taken automatically for here also and here i will just double click and i will name it as employee length okay so employee length is nothing but uh, i have already told you actually this so i will just select this again Okay, so employee length is nothing but guys that particular fellow who is working in any of the industry or he's in his in his entire career or how many years he's working and with respect to that the bank is giving the loan with respect to uh, that particular employee length by how many amount he is giving by how many total applications so if i see for total loan applications you can see the 10 plus years people are taking most of the loans less than one year two years so in this way we can you know take an uh, you know uh, out how we can see and inside from here so i will just try to place it over here and i will just make a dashboard for this okay or make a room for this to show it over here all right so this looks nice now we will do some more formattings on this i will just select this go here and i will change the color of the bars okay so for me i will take the bar color of this okay or we can change this to this particular okay so this looks nice and next what we have to do is uh whatever we have the uh, legends or we, if you want we can add the uh, background of this particular numbers over here so i will just go in data labels and we will turn on the background over here and we will choose the background as this okay or we can make it much more black okay so this looks fine all right so in this way these are the labels over here now same thing uh, we will take again uh, the background from here control c control v of same size and we will try to place it over here okay and i will increase the size likewise and now next what we have to do as per our problem statement is the loan purpose okay by loan purpose we have to create this chart okay and whenever i'm changing you i have to show you whenever i'm changing you can see the values are changing with respect to that okay so you can see the values are changing with respect to that so for now we'll keep it as total loan amount or total loan applications now next what we have to do is with respect to uh, loan purpose we have to find this chart so i will just copy the same thing or we will just create a new one so i will just select this one and i will just select uh, the purpose okay so we have to find it by purpose so i will just take purpose and i'll add it to y-axis and next we have to select the dynamic measure which is at the bottom and i will add it into x-axis okay so this is our loan purpose the same thing i will just select this chart go to format printer so whatever formatting is applied over here it will be applied on this chart okay so the same way i will just increase the size and here instead of purpose i will make type p as capital okay so this is the home loan by our purpose and now next we will do some formatting again on this i will change the colors of the bars quickly so we will be taking the different colors for here okay so i will just take a uh, this particular color for us so this looks nice all right now next thing we have to do some more formattings we have left to do some formattings on this particular line chart actually so i will i have just noticed that i will just select this uh, and then go to format visual and here in lines you can see we have an option called solid line round line or whatever colors also we have shaded area we have how much should be the shaded area transparency then we will just go in marker so i will just turn on the markers and i will just use this marker and i will just increase the size of it okay so this is what i have to add just i have to show the markers over here so it will be visible that uh, which is for which month and all those things so how is the line increasing and what is the slope of the line from each month so that whether what might be the increase in the uh, loan applications or the total funded amount all right the next we have to you know analyze is the home ownership analysis okay so with respect to that i will just take the background for this first okay so not this i have to take the background so for the background selection i will just take it aside Control c Control v i'll bring it down and i will just take this at the end all right 
okay so now for this we will be taking uh one more chart over here that is nothing but a tree map so here we have a tree map i will just select this this is the tree map which we are going to use now next what we will be doing is we want a home ownership so i will just take a home ownership i will add it to category close this and i will take a dynamic measure from here and i will add it into values okay so here we can see this is the home ownership so now we will do formattings for this so i will just select this chart go to format painter and i will just select this you can see automatically uh, the values with respect to that and all those uh, the titles are also changing so i'll just try to adjust it this over here all right okay so in this way we will also change the name of this from home ownership to h o m o home ownership all right perfect oops i will have to do we have to press and enter when we type it otherwise it won't change press enter okay now it has been changed and with respect to home ownership you can see rented are at maximum then mortgage are at max, uh, second maximum then we have uh what we can say though own and then we have others so with respect to that you can change your or we can you can check your values with respect to your query document and you can check whether we are getting the same value so let's say for rent we have 18439 so when you check it in your query document so you can see it are 18439 and for mortgage it is 17198 so which are getting the same values over here so the same way you have to check it for other values also so you have to just check change this parameter over here so let's say total funded amount if you want to check so total funded amount is you can see 219 million so you can see the same is for mortgage 219 million for rented it is 185 million same we have 185 million over here all right so in this way we have to you know analyze this particular dashboard so for overview we have created all the dashboards over here next thing what we have to do here is just we have to you know uh, change our or we have to change some uh, filters over here so for filters instead of purpose uh, i will be changing this filter to good versus bad loan so i will just take here good versus bad loan okay and i will increase the size and instead of this particular filter which we have here just click outside instead of this i will just take good versus bad loan select this okay so now you can see if you want to see for bad loan what are the changes you can see this everything the data will be shown for bad loan if you want to see for good loan you can see for good loan and if you want to see for both you can see the, uh, the data for both similarly if you want to see for any grade so for a grade how it is performing for c grade how it is performing if you want to see for a b and c if you, you can see multi select here and you can see for a b and see how the values are performing so likewise okay so in this way we have analyzed this the next thing what we have to do is with respect to this filter also so let's say whenever i'm clicking on this 60 months so when i click on 60 months the values should be changed with respect to that but here you can see values are changing but you can see the bar is not changing entirely it is not filtering the data just it is filtering inside is bar only and which is not the good way to uh, you know visualize the data so for that what i will do is i have to go in edit interaction so i will go i will select this particular chart first then i will go in format and i will click on edit interactions okay so as soon as i click on edit interaction so my chart has been selected as total funded so instead of you know highlighting the value we have to filter the value so just click on this you can see it is it, it has been filled over here so it is now filtering similarly for this also it should filter for this also it should filter. so when i click on state for this also it should filter so for each and every chart we have to change it and for this also it should filter. so when i select this uh, this particular bar for employee length here also it should filter it should filter here it should filter here similarly for this also we have to change filter 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 here as well when i check this filter 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 okay so and then i will turn off the entity interaction and now when i click on this let's say for 36 month you can see enter values are filtering out okay similarly if i want to see for depth consideration when i click on this the filter values are filtering with respect to that all right similarly uh, when i click on two years okay so with respect to that the values will be changing all right so let's say i want to see for mortgage you can see the mortgage values are changing 
with respect to let's say i want to see for california state from here itself so you can see with respect to that for california state the values will be changing if you want to see for credit card okay so for credit card also the values will be changing with respect to that and you will be getting or you will be able to slice and dice the data see the data at different angles not only from these filters also but by clicking on each and every individual bar or that particular phi or that particular we can say heat chart in that particular heat map or a tree map so this will give us a wide range of visualization and with respect to this this is a good way of visualization it should filter out okay which i showed you with respect to the total similarly if you want to see by loan applications also when i click here so how many are loan applications for debt considerations how is it working for 60 months so all the values will be changing with respect to that and we can visualize our data with our different angles all right so in this way we have created our second dashboard as well and now we will go ahead and create our third dashboard which is a details tab which is a very easy dashboard because it there is nothing we just have to create a grid view over there and the same uh, what we can say filters we are going to use there just we cannot use the major because we are going to use all the majors in that just we will be using the same filters over there okay and next is remaining with the navigation buttons i will show you how to add the navigation buttons and how to add the image also over there okay so if you have come at this point of this particular video then you are doing great guys i know you might have learned so many things from this particular video so if you have i request you to go ahead and like this particular video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends turn on the notification bell so that you will get a notification of these beautiful dashboards some complex and advanced dashboards as well so that you will be you know enhancing your data analyst knowledge and you will be good to go in your real time uh, whatever interviews or real-time projects also all right so now to create our third dashboard what i will do i will just duplicate this dashboard again so i will right click here and i will click on duplicate this page okay so now it will create one more instance for this and now we will name it as details okay so this is our details dashboard and i will name it here also this is our details dashboard where we are going to mention all the details about the entire loan which we have so first what i will do I will just select all of these elements. I will just select this, all these elements, and I will delete this. Okay, we don't want this. See, this also, I will just select all this. We will delete this. We will delete this particular chart also. We want this background, so I have kept this. And I will just extend this background over here. Extend it likewise and extend it vertically also. Okay, so now in this only, what we will do, we will mention our details, all of the details over here. Perfect so now uh, we will go ahead and create so what we will do first we the ages of this particular whatever rounded ages are that we will reduce it first so select the shape and rounded coronals will make it to three okay so now this looks good now we will take uh what we have to take a table first i will take a table i will adjust the table over here first we will just increase it right wise and increase it vertically so this will be the space for our table right perfect now what we will do we will take our all the particular things which we want to show over here so first we will show id so i will take id and i will bring it into values so it is you know uh, first i will just delete this so select this chart first okay then i will take id and i will put it into columns but it is summing up so we don't want to sum we want to get it row by row each id so for that i will do i will just click on this drop down and i will say don't summarize so as soon as i do that you can see id has been created over here now next what we have to take is i will take purpose what was the purpose of loan so then i will take it and add it over here okay so this was the purpose then next is the home ownership i will take the home ownership for us so just check this box it will take automatically over here then we want to check the grade what was the grade of that loan i have taken grade i have to also take subgrade okay then i will take issue date so i will just check this then we have to take the funded amount so i will just take the total funded amount so this is the total funded amount so this is the total funded amount and then we will take what was the interest rate for that particular fellow yeah. so just take the interest rate from here then we will take the how much installment is paying okay so we will find out the installment so this is the installment for that particular then uh, we we will see how much amount we will we have collected from him back so this is the total amount received you can see all right so in this way we are going to analyze these things so now quickly what we will do we will do some formattings on this particular chart 
so i will select the chart then go to format your visual and then go to style and from here we will choose again alternating rows so we are going to use alternating rows then we don't want to show here grand total so go in totals and turn off this so we don't want to show the grand totals then go to grid and uh, here uh, we will we will change this later okay then uh, go to values values we will be showing up to semi bold okay and we will make it as 11 okay so or not 11 we will keep it as 10 only because we have some space issues over here then the text or uh, we will change first the background color the first background color i will take is as this okay so this is my first background color then the second background color uh, which i will be taking over here that is alternative background color i will take it as black okay or i will take it as this black okay so this is okay then next what we will do the text color for uh, will be white and here also the alternative text color will be white okay so we will keep it as as white as possible so let's see in this particular dashboard so we will just change this particular color to something darker okay so this is okay now next thing what we will do now we will go in grid and in horizontal grid lines you can change this color to this particular thing right so okay so this looks good now we will go in general then go in effects and we will turn off the background okay we don't want to show the background over here then we have some space over here just we will increase the space then select this chart and i will just take it to right take it above a bit and we will adjust it somewhere in middle of it <laughs> so now next what we will do quickly uh, we will change the uh, we can say the title of this particular columns so i will just select this and instead of purpose i will type e as capital so purpose enter home ownership we will cap home ownership okay then grade enter then subgrade also we will change subgrade similarly issue date okay then the funded amount we'll just keep funded amount we'll remove the total from here okay so this is our funded amount then interest rate okay, so this is interest rate then installment we'll just change this installment to i as capital and this is the amount received so this is for us the amount received perfect okay so now quickly what we will do we will just increase the column size also over here so that it is perfectly looking nice okay so now in this way we have created this chart also or this particular uh, we can say uh, this particular dashboard also so if you want to do some more formattings here you can do for values what we will do we'll just take this color because it's very much bright to eye and this color okay so now this looks good okay so now we have just taken some off-white colors and we can export this grid if you want so that you know if you want to take create some excel sheets and all those things all right so this is the detail step now when i come to back to my summary tab over here you can see now we have to add some you know navigation buttons here so that we will be able to navigate from one dashboard to another dashboard so this is the last part remaining so first what we will do we will add our image over here first so for that i will go in insert and i will add an image okay and in image we have in downloads i will add this image for you you can download it from there i will just add this image for here nicely okay so this will be the image which we will be using next what we will do uh we'll just add a navigation buttons so for that you have you have to go in insert again and you have a buttons option over here and in buttons you have a navigator over here and just click on page navigators so you can see the page navigator button has been created over here so we will do some formattings to it so just go in style okay so instead of style what we will do uh grid layout we have to change it to vertical so we will change this grid layout to vertical and i will just adjust this somewhere here 
just reduce this size and we will increase it vertically like this all right so now we are at summary page right now so instead of uh, summary page we the summary page should be the background color as white and this we will make it as blue okay so i will just select this now go to shape or uh, just go to style and in style we will change the uh, first select selected okay just go on selected selected means for summary and we will change the font color to or uh, we change first background color the fill color we will change fill color we will change it to white i can say or this white also we can choose and we will change the font color to black okay and we will change this to semi bold okay and we will increase the size to 12 similarly for others that is for default okay for default we will change the font color to white or we will change it to oh white yeah we will change it to white and the fill color we will change that is nothing but this fill color we will change it to a bit black or we will change this black perfect all right <clears throat> so now we are on summary dashboard that it it means that it is in white color so it will indicate that yeah we are on summary dashboard similarly what we have to do we have to just take this okay just take this control c copy it go on overview dashboard and just paste it over here you can see automatically it has been taken over here and here you can see uh, with respect to that uh, we, we have to just uh, click here because automatically now we overview has been selected all right so now what we will do i uh, will just take this entire thing from here control z okay so this filters whatever we have placed now we will take it a bit down i will just press control and select all of them Press control and select all of them and just drag it down. Okay, so it will be there. So it will be some space for us to move. Now, next, we'll just copy our image also. Control C, come to overview dashboard and press it over here. Control V. So this is our image. Same, we will paste it on details dashboard also. Press control V and from here we will copy our uh, this particular these things. That is so control C navigation buttons and we will press it control v and we don't want this select major to be present over here so we will delete this okay so in this way for this also dashboard we can you know check for different uh, reasons and all those things we can see the data all right so i will not repeat that again because we know that if we are adding some filters so we will be able to change the uh, what we can see uh, that filter slice and dice the data and see the data at different angles so now i will show you how to operate this dashboard actually so you can see uh, this is our uh, you know the complete bank loan dashboard i will just reduce this size likewise likewise and now if let's say if you want to jump on overview dashboard so you have to press control and you have to just press over here okay so you will be jumping to uh, this particular dashboard if you want to go to details just press control and go here so you will be on details dashboard so if you want to come to summary again you can press control and you will be on the summary dashboard all right you don't have to press control when you actually publish this on your power bi service online you just have to click it but whenever you are operating this on power bi desktop by clicking it only we we are not allowed to move we have to press control and then it is allowing us to move. okay so i'll just increase this size right so in this way we have built this all the dashboard we have built uh, the base sql queries we have compared our dashboard with our sql queries and i hope you have learned many more things in this dashboard many more advanced things in this dashboard i know we have used some basic some advanced some ultra advanced uh, functionalities and options for this to build our dashboard but i'm sure you have learned because we have added i have added the domain documents i have added the problem statement the complete problem statement the terminology document you can read it you can gain the knowledge first and then you have to build this dashboard so if you have learned something from here i request you to go ahead again and like the video subscribe my channel and then we will see the same dashboard in other tools also like in power uh, we have already designed in power bi so we will build the same in tableau also we will build the same in excel also right